speaks for him. I doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> I call the April 10th, 2024 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting to order. All of those that are standing up, please find a seat and sit down. Um, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> After I just told them to sit down. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. I will ask for a roll call, please. Commissioner Hubbard? Here. Commissioner Bradshaw? Present. Commissioner Helms? Here. Commissioner Barlow? Commissioner Morris? Here. Chairperson Gillette? Here. Vice Chair Hassett? Present. Commissioner Patillo? Here. Commissioner Martin? Here. Commissioner Ruge? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. We will now have an automated announcement. Anyone who has not signed in, please do so at the table located in the lobby. Should anyone wish to speak, please complete a request to speak form, which is also located on the lobby table next to the sign-in sheet. A request to speak form must be completed for each item you would like to speak on. Please note, there are stairs on the right, left, and center aisles, and we ask that you use caution when using the stairs. There is also a ramp located to the audience's left. If anyone has written comments, exhibits, petitions, photos, or letters they intend to present at today's meeting, have 17 copies and give them to a staff member at the back of the auditorium. Staff member, please hold up your hand for the audience. If you do not have 17 copies, you may use the overhead camera to present your documents. Please place your documents on the podium and line it up with the arrows indicated. If you want your documentation to go on record, you must hand them to the clerk after your presentation with the agenda item number clearly marked on the documentation. Is now members of the public cannot speak to staff members that are seated at the tables with microphones during the meeting. If you have questions, please see the staff member located in the back of the auditorium. All speakers will be limited to two minutes to make their presentation statements. Everyone, please turn off all cell phones or place them on vibrate during the meeting. If you must take a call, please leave the meeting area and go outside to have your conversation. We also ask the audience to refrain from talking with one another during the presentations and discussions. Today, the Planning and Zoning Commission will hear public testimony and then forward a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors. Everyone attending the meeting is asked to remember that the administrative building and campus are tobacco-free areas, which means no smoking is allowed from curb to curb. No food or drinks are allowed in the auditorium except for bottled water. If there are any items remaining on the agenda, the commission will break for lunch for one hour per the chairman's discretion. Today, the Planning and Zoning Commission will hear public testimony and then forward a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors. The items with a recommendation made by the Commission will be heard by the Board of Supervisors on Monday, April 15, 2024 at 9.30 a.m. in this same location with the exception of any continued items. I would like to uh, welcome our new uh, commissioner from District 4, Rex Ruji. 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 Thank you. Thank you for coming. Item number one, 
Staff Report by Alex Bolin. Thank you. I'm going to open the public hearing. Is the applicant present and do you wish to speak? No. Okay, I apologize. I was unaware that we were having a problem with everything. Can you hear me? Madam Chair, it looks like this microphone is working, so we'll have our staff come and present from this podium. Testing. Okay. Item one is an evaluation of a request for an extension of time for a special use permit for assessor's parcel number 4023240 to allow for an additional time for the completion of BOS resolution 2022-040, allowing for a billboard in the Littlefield vicinity. Staff received two letters of opposition. Staff recommends approval with the new expiration date of March 7th, 2025. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to open the public hearing and ask if the applicant is here and if you wish to speak. Okay, do we have any questions from the commissioners? Commissioner Bradshaw? Um, excuse me. Uh, are we going to have the public hearing first? Should we listen to the public? Well, no one wants to speak. Oh, is there only? So. Oh, okay, perfect. Then yes, I, I apologize. I wasn't, I thought that there was, there were those that were uh, signed up. So um, it's my understanding, and maybe you, you know this, uh, but my understanding is there is, a, there is a petition that has been put forward and will come before this board next meeting to uh, implement this corridor of I-15 as a scenic byway which would preclude any new um, billboards. And the other item is the last time we approved billboards in this area, the Board of Supervisors rejected that approval and denied them. I just want to bring that to the attention of this board, and I strongly oppose this extension of time. So maybe you can speak to that. I can a little bit. Um... Good morning, my name is Kathy Tackett Hicks. I'm acting as the owner's agent in this issue. <clears throat> I processed the initial billboard um, long before any petition was started or considered. I did hear about a petition. I presented for three billboards to the northeast of this, which was approved by this commission and ultimately denied by the Board of Supervisors. I've not seen any petition anywhere. This particular request was approved um, unanimously a couple years ago. There was a change in ownership. It was applied um, initially by uh, Mike Black, MJB Development. Um, that The property was purchased by Terrible Herps. I processed a rezone for Terrible Herps before this board, which was approved unanimous along with the supervisors. Uh, because there was a change in ownership, um, we requested the first extension of time, which was, which was reasonable and accepted and approved by all of you. Um, this is the second. If you want to 
Um, add a caveat that this will be the final, that's fine. Those plans uh, for that project, Terrible Herps, have been approved through ADOT finally. That is a very long um, process, so it drags out every project, but the ADOT plans are approved. The county has received uh, plans for this that they're working on. The project is moving forward, and I would ask that you approve this extension. It's not a new one, it's existing, it's reasonable. You look at that first picture. This is an entire commercial corridor uh, for development, and and uh, they need additional advertising opportunities. Uh, this one I do not see uh, as a problem. I would ask that you approve it. If you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer. I, I do have yeah. a follow up one. Thank you. Um, so is this is this billboard specifically uh, for? the terrible herps or is it an additional billboard for outside um, signing signage for other commercial ventures so it would be owned by terrible herps and uh, i can i should have asked them what that would be because they will want large signage on that parcel especially because it's off of frontage road from i-15 uh, but i do i cannot tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt if they're going to use it themselves or they're going to uh, advertise outside Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the commissioners? Um, sure. This is um, the, what the third extension. This will be the second extension. Second. Yeah. So this one, if we pass this one, it'll be the third extension. No, no, I believe this is my second request for an extension. So I applied, got approved, made one request for an extension, got approved, and now this is the second. If they have an extension and there isn't anything done, anybody else want to uh, do something there? They're, they can't do it, can they? Because you have an extension on it? I'm not sure uh, what you're getting at. Huh? Well, if somebody else wants to do something in there, you have an extension on this. So no, no, nobody else can come in there and do anything, right? They can't put up their own sign or whatever. Well, everyone in commercial areas has a right to put up their commercial signage. The county allows for that. So these are freestanding. The billboard signs are different, and it does have some requirements for within a thousand foot of a commercial business or 500 foot spacing in between. So as Commissioner Bradshaw brought up before, um, although the Planning and Zoning Commission approved the previous requests for billboards, the Board of Supervisors denied all of those. Okay. And I was aware. And let me just throw out one thing. Um, I'm aware of one letter of opposition. We must have got a second one recently. But the one letter that I saw was from the gentleman who got denied last month, who is not happy about that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any other questions from the commissioners? Hearing none, I'm gonna close the public hearing and thank I you. ask for a motion. Make a motion to approve item one for staff recommendations. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Hassett, seconded by Commissioner Pertillo. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nay. So we have two opposed. Aye. Okay, the motion passes. Item number two, Peggy Clements. Item number two is an evaluation of a request for a rezone of assessor's parcel number 4022516 from an AR agriculture residential zone to an RE35M residential recreation 35,000 square foot minimum lot size zone for a minor land division in the scenic vicinity. Staff recommends approval per development standard. Thank you. I'm going to open the public hearing and ask if the if the um, applicant is here and if you wish to speak. <coughs> Seeing no one, I have a, um, a request from Sean Mesner. Would you like to come to the podium? Name and address, please. Uh, Sean Meisner, Kingman, Arizona. Chairman, board, um, just want to talk about this rezone. Um, I want to show you some. I've been contacted by 
Residents in scenic Arizona, I'm, I'm a candidate, District 1 supervisor. I'm already being contacted by, con my, guy, by my constituents. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, I've been contacted by scenic residents, uh, very concerned about the desert tortoise devastation. I've been sent a dozen pictures of dead turtles killed by development. Please make sure proper precautions are taken to stop this devastation. An impact study, a relocation, and turtle fencing around the property uh, sounds logical. Let me show you the rest of the pictures here. That's the smush turtle. There's a turtle in the middle of the construction. Another turtle. Another one. That is the uh, construction, and on the bottom here is another dead turtle. Tortoise, I'm sorry, I apologize. I apologize. Um, so there, there's the proof. I just want to make sure that this uh, an impact study has been done for this property. You're going from 35 acres down to less than one. So uh, this should be considered. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to ask staff, did, was there consideration made for the tortoises when the approval was done? Uh, Chairman Gillette, so in the zoning ordinance, we don't have any requirements for any type of environmental impact study for development um, or anything that would require them to do a tortoise survey. Uh, certainly, if they wish to, they could contact the Arizona Game and Fish Department, and they have uh, guidelines for uh, doing one of those surveys um, before you develop a property. Thank you. I'm going to close the public hearing. Do any of the commissioners have any questions? Was the applicant present? Um, no, apparently not. Are they available by phone? No. I would like to. Um, I would like to postpone this until some sort of. Um... I'll motion. Okay. I make a motion to continue item two to the next meeting. Second. And oh, I'm sorry. Can we require the applicant to be present? Second. Second. Fuck. Uh, we have Jeffrey a Alger. Here we go. Oh, Hello. He is now joining. Um, we have a motion. Uh, yes. Uh, Madam Hello. Chair. Hello. Can you hear? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Is the applicant we on the are phone? Here. Yes, the applicant is here. Okay, they just signed on. The app. I believe the applicant. I'm right here. I think. I think they're on my phone. Are you the applicant? Yes, I am. This is Jeffrey Alger. Are we talking about parcels 4022546? Yes. Yes. Okay, I've been on this call the entire time. All this is is uh, my sister and I are inheriting two acres from my dad, and all we want to do is split it into one acre parcels so that we can both have uh, separate ownership in case one of us passes away sooner. There's no big land division or, or anything anything else going on here the, the the properties around there have already been divided into one acre lots from before from family members of mine my aunt crystal my uncle jim there's nothing out of the ordinary here the the survey department that's doing it out of saint george um the you know the company there has said that there wouldn't be any issue whatsoever but that i should be on this phone call just in case Hello? If you are that familiar with this property, you are aware of the fact that there are tortoises on it. Is well, this correct? is my dad has lived there for 30 years on this property. No, okay. There's no new development here. He already has his house on it. All we're doing is just taking his two acres and dividing it into one, two one-acre lots. Ma Madam Chair, real quick. Take it off speaker. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Well, yes, one we second, can hear you. Sir, Hold you on. 
The photos that were shown, it looked like the land had already been leveled, but in our packets, it shows that there's houses and there's equipment and that if you continue down in our packet, I don't know that we're looking at the same parcel unless they've already bulldozed these parcels Maybe. over. It looks like there's trailers no, and houses there's... already here. Yes, of I, course, my I, whole I family have a lives motion there. to postpone this. I'm going to withdraw that motion. I only did that because the applicant wasn't here. Um, yeah, I've been here the whole time. I just wasn't able to get through to speak with you guys. I was pushing the star button. It wasn't working. But this is parcel 402-25-146. And all it is is a two-acre lot. And my dad's property is on the one half. And all I'm trying to do is uh, divide it down the middle so that when my dad passes, my sister and I will each have our own parcel, as does my Aunt Crystal and my Aunt Phyllis. And all the other family members that are around there each have one acre already. And this, there was a, a rezoning granted to them to be able to do this a few years back with no issues. Okay, thank you. So Brown Engineering, yeah, Brown Engineering said that there, there would be no issues whatsoever. They're handling everything for me, um, you know, and, and that's all we're trying to do is just, just divide the land so that down the road that we can each have our own house on it when my dad passes away. My question is for staff and Mr. Meisner. The, the images that are in our packet, this is already a developed property. So where did those photos come from? Ma Madam Chair, uh, if I may, while I'm up at the podium, I just wanted to clarify that it is just a minor land division. I believe the parcel is only two acres right now, and they are zoned AR, which would allow for a one-acre parcel, but um, they don't quite have enough if they did divide it in half to equal the the minimum lot size and that that's why we're having to go to a an re zone which is pretty similar to the ar zone um, and we're putting a limitation that they have to have at least 35 uh, uh 35 000 square feet uh, for each parcel that's the minimum acreage um, for each of those parcels but it is not a 36 acre parcel that they're dividing down to one acre which was mentioned by the the speaker before Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mesner. Can you explain to us why your pictures show no buildings and ours do? Ab absolutely no problem. Those are pictures from the residents up there that were concerned. That was actually from 2022. Um, I was concerned because I did not want this to turn into the same thing. Um, so that's where those pictures came from. This says it's a 35 acre minimum. Mm -mm to 35,000 square feet minimum lot size. Is that's, that's incorrect? 1,000. What's the 35 M mean? 35,000. Madam Chair, the 35 M indicates that they can't have less than 35,000 square foot. Right. Okay. For us to have <laughs> legal access from Arvada Road, um, it's the, the, the easement would have eaten into those two acres just enough to where they weren't quite two full acres anymore, uh, precluding the division. So that's what Brown Engineering has, uh, has laid out that we needed to rezone in order to get that, you know, to give the easement across the property from Arvada to allow for driveways to the two properties for us to do it legally and correctly. And that's what we were, we're trying to do. Okay. Thank you very so, much. Yeah. I'm going to call for a motion. Yes, I make a motion to approve item two. Thank you for the clarification I'll sec by staff. I'll second that motion. I have a motion by Commissioner Hassett, seconded by Commissioner Ruge. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. We will move on to item number three, Alex Bolin. Thank you very much. I'm leaving the call. Jeffrey Alger. Is now exiting. Jeffrey item Alger is an evaluation of a request is now for a exiting. rezone of assessors parcel numbers 3390469 through 3390410 and 339-15-175 through 339-15-178 from an AR36A agricultural residential 36 acre minimum lot size zone to an R1 single family residential, R2 medium density residential, and C2 general commercial zones to allow for future residential subdivision, commercial and retail opportunities in the Golden Valley vicinity. 
The site is approximately 1,480 acres and is currently vacant. The proposed zoning will match the current general plan so that areas designated as low-density residential will be rezoned to R1. Areas designated as medium-density residential will be rezoned to R2, and areas designated as general commercial will be rezoned to C2. Staff received 210 letters of opposition, three petitions of opposition, and 38 letters of support. Staff recommends approval with standard conditions. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to open the public hearing, and I do have request forms. And so I'm going to call your name, and then I will call a name behind you so that we can expedite this as, as quickly as we possibly can. So the, suppose the first speaker will be Scott, I think this is Jackson, but I'm not sure. Uh, and the second speaker will be um, Canelby. You guys really need to print. And the third speaker will be Branson um, Easy. Do you want to hear from the applicant first? You are the applicant. Uh, I'm here as a member of the public. We have two members that are the applicants that would like to talk first. Okay. Tyler, Travin, do you want to come? I'll talk after them. Uh, chairman and board, appreciate the opportunity. My name is Tyler Engel. Uh, this is Travin Pennington. We uh, work for the applicant. Our address is 2800 Wallapay Mountain Road, Kingman, Arizona. Um, we, we purchased this land mainly because of the general plan designations of it being low density and uh, medium density um, designations, which is uh, kind of our bread and butter. We're a builder here in the Kingman area. We've been building for 28 years. Um, over the last four years, we've built about a thousand houses in the area. Uh, last year, I was invited to be on the affordable housing panel for the county. They did a study and uh, hired some outside consultants to analyze where in the county we as um, builders and the public and investors could could build homes to to house the people that that are moving here that need to work here and um, and kind of solve solve the the housing crisis and um, that's when I started considering Golden Valley and we found this this property that already had the general plan designations for basically uh, subdivisions and and that's our plan to we're hoping to to build um, subdivisions there just matching, um, wanting to get the zoning to match exactly what the general plan already has. Um, uh, a couple other items, we, we are local. I went to, I grew up here in Kingman, went to high school here. We're not some outside investors that are just coming to get, uh, get approvals and, and flip the property or move away or anything. We're, we're gonna be here for the long haul. Our office is in Kingman, you can come visit visit any time. So we want it to be successful. We want Mojave County to be successful. Uh, along those lines, I, I have a little spreadsheet here. I, uh, I'm actually a CPA, it was my, uh, my first occupation. So I really love my, my spreadsheets. Um, this shows the amount of, of taxes for, for some of the different entities right now. So currently uh, a vacant one acre of land that we own out there, is generating $1.20 for the county each year, $2 for the fire district, $2.85 for KUSD, $0.30 cents for Mojave County flood control. If we're allowed to do the subdivision um, and get the zoning and do the subdivision, post-development, you can see the, the numbers per acre would have multiple houses on it. So as I do that math, it's, it's thousands of dollars per year per acre, which is, a gigantic influx of, of um, revenue for, for those entities to be able to, to both service that area, but then the, the county is, as a whole. So we wanna solve the affordable housing crisis. We wanna spur 
economic activity. We use all local subcontractors. So most of the, the price of a, a, an end home that, that Angle Homes would sell to somebody, most of that money goes to, to subcontractors. They're employing local people. Um, and so that money just trickles down into, into our local, local economy there. So um, we'd urge you to, to support the general plan, help solve the, the housing crisis, and help, help support our uh, local economy here by, by approving this. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Travin Pennington. I'm with the applicant. Um, I just would like to make a statement that we have, we've read every one of these letters of opposition and we've tried and, and the petitions we, we've addressed and we, we take those concerns very seriously, right? These are the same kind of concerns I would have with a development behind my house. Um, but I also believe in the system that exists. There is a system, it's called the development process, right? Where the, I believe it is a self-correcting mechanism where these concerns get addressed. Um, I, I, I have a unique position uh, in this topic, right? I'm the guy that has, when we buy a piece of property that hasn't been graded in hundreds of years, right? And there's native water tra traveling across that property. I have the unique... Uh, role and like I get to build we work on getting the drainage studies to address that drainage and build the channels and appropriately size them and so when I think about this subdivision I think about the other subdivisions that we've built that don't have drainage issues and so I, I think you could if you wanted to know what a picture of what we think this would look like it'd be any of the other subdivisions we built have built here in Mojave County I see a subdivision with curbs and sidewalks around the perimeter I see perimeter landscaping I see a homeowners association that maintains those those improvements uh, I see trails and parks I see cooperation with the Mojave County Parks Division um, so that our trails and HOA amenities work well with the residents that live out there in Golden Valley I see community commercial to address issues like medical right we we realize right you put thousands of people living out there we're going to need doctor's offices we're going to need post offices we're going to need so i when i hear the concerns i see a picture in my mind of what this subdiv subdivision will look like in the future and it's going to address all of these concerns what about the utilities the water the electricity have you made plans for that i uh, i mean we we intend so to answer your question is we intend to work with GVID staff to come up with, there's a process that exists that's going to dictate what improvements we're going to have to pay for um, and at what point we're going to have to pay for those. But, but the policy is pretty clear. Just at the last uh, County Board of Supervisors meeting, they had an item on GVID to clarify some policies and, out, and also how much water they have available according to the Arizona Department of Water Resources. So they have many, many more allocations and acre feet available to serve thousands more, more houses. So we've clarified that with staff and then that was just on the last um, Board of Supervisors meeting clarifying how much water, according to, to them and the state, is, is available. So we just plan on working with GVID. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and then like Mojave Electric is the power, I, actually I believe it is Unisource. Unisource is the electric company that's out there. We intend to create a sewer wastewater treatment facility to service our properties and maybe additional other properties in Golden Valley. So I, I mean, we'll also be installing probably communications. So there'll be fiber optic um, provided to the, this, com this particular community. Okay, thank you very much. I may call you back at the end of this, so. Um, so do we have Scott? Thank you. So I just uh, wanted Name to let- Name and address, please. Sorry, what? Name and address. Scott Jackson, 2304 Iroquois Drive. Thank you. Um, I just want to try and alleviate concerns, just like the, the applicants, that many of the concerns are going to be taken care of regarding flooding as part of the development process. We have to retain water on site and make sure that 
we're directing flow. So it's going to improve uh, water flow in the area. Um, as Tyler showed, it's going to bring in, because of the development, additional property taxes, which are going to be able to you be used to um, maintain roads, fund the sheriff's office, the fire department. All of those are going to be receiving more revenue because of this. Um, this is going to directly help alleviate the concern that the Board of Supervisors have with the lack of housing in the area for families growing up here that, that need affordable housing. And again, this matches the general plan. Uh, we're not trying to deviate from the general plan, but just match what the county wants in that area to, to help the area grow and improve. It's going to be a beautiful project, um, bringing revenue to the county that they need. Um, lots of people in the area, we've sold many homes in Golden Valley. People want grocery stores. They want commercial. They want those things there. And the additional housing, the, the people that move there, are what's going to bring those amenities to the area so that there can be a grocery store in Golden Valley and support that. So just again, we are going to address all the concerns that the, the people have as part of the development process. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I want you all to be polite to the speakers, whether they are saying what you want to say or not. Um, we cannot have everybody talking when someone else is talking. So you take the chance of being thrown out if you want to do that. The next person is uh, Matt. Gosh, I can't read these writing. Uh, Cannibly, something like that. And, and then after him is Branson Peasy. So please come to the podium. Give me your name and your address. Good morning, Chairwoman. Uh, Commission members, my name is Matthew Capalbi. Uh, right, I uh, reside at 717 Spring Street here in Kingman. Um, I'd like to share with you the fact that I'm a third generation native of Kingman. Born and raised here, my family's from here, I had my children here. And I want my children to have the same opportunities that I did uh, growing up here. Right now, Arizona's facing a housing crisis. We're about more than a quarter million homes short throughout the state to meet the demand that we're having. And I want my children and my grandchildren, my nieces, nephews, to be able to have the same type of opportunities I had. Right now, they don't have that. The housing is getting ridiculous. The prices are shooting through the roof, and we cannot close the gate behind us as people move here. We have to be able to accommodate them and provide the housing needed for the people that are not only gonna be moving here, but that are gonna be born and growing up here, such as my children. I want them to be able to get a decent job and afford a nice house, not have to pay through the roof more than half of their pay towards rent or something like that. I want them to be able to buy a house. That's what these types of projects do. I know we have a lot of folks that are moving into the area and, and they want to, as soon as they get here, they want to keep it the way it was. Well, I'd like to have the childhood community I had when I was 10 years old, but that's not the case. And we don't have that anymore, but we need to do the best we can to provide the housing that's affordable and accessible for the people that are going to be growing up here and that are going to be moving here. And uh, I thank you very much for your time and especially for your commitment to our community to make sure that we're growing in the way that we should. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Branson, Branson, is that correct? Branson PC? I don't know if our, our, our um, alarm is working or not. It is. So you have two minutes. Okay. Thank you, uh, Council. Uh, my name is Branson Pease uh, here in Kingman, Arizona. I just want to touch on a few points um, when it comes to 
Angle Homes. They they have about 12 communities that they that they're focusing currently to build in, and uh, that's spread out mostly in Kingman, but also spread out to Fort Mojave, um, Valley Vista. So there's a lot of projects that Angle Homes is focusing on. And the uh, Golden Valley uh, was a community that we attempted to try out and see um, what the what the interest was, and um, it showed that uh, there's a lot of interest for obviously economical housing. And Angle Homes did attempt to build a community ship estates uh, recently. We're act actually at the tail end, and the reception has been great uh, for that location. And that's the only reason we're exploring the opportunity to build more out there. And just to give a little clarity on time frame, this isn't something Angle Homes is going to come in and build everything within five years. Uh, it could take a long time, 15, 20 years, but Angle Homes is committed to uh, trying to help uh, growth happen. And often that's not, uh, change is never easy. Um, but uh, to have another builder come in, their interests are not, are not going to be the same and they don't understand the community like Angle Homes does. Um, the, uh, the community we were building recently that we're almost done in Ship Estates, that was about 40 homes a year that we're building. And there's no reason this wouldn't be about the same track of timeline. That we're not looking to build, you know, 200, 300 homes a year, go crazy. It's going to be a very slow process. And over time, historically... Anytime we've come in to build those homes, the value of properties have, have always gone up. And so just to help with that and, um, and create that, that value for I'm economic sorry, housing. Sorry, your time is up. I have Angie um, Transon, Liz Randolph, and James Jones. I, and we'll start <laughs> with Angie. Good morning, my name is Angie Tronson. I'm at 4277 North Laguna Road in Golden Valley. Um, I am directly across from the proposed rezone area. In addition, my family also owns two parcels, one that is also directly across from the rezone area. Um, we moved here in 2022, um, so I can certainly appreciate the need for affordable housing. Um, we did look in Kingman, um, that was certainly affordable to, I think, the demographics that Angle is building for. However, we um, chose to reside in Golden Valley because of the rural, small town feel. Um, so when I first heard about this, I wanted to wait um, to hear from Angle Homes. I am certainly not opposed to progress. That is an inevitable part of life. Um, but I think that we should um, expect and deserve responsible and safe building. Um, on March 20th, they participated in a community meeting to discuss the rezone. Um, although it appeared to be informative and a good faith effort um, to work with the community, um, issues regarding infrastructure and safety were dismissed. Engel um, directed inquiries to the various municipalities, asserting that this is what tax dollars cover. Um, of course, we know that um, Golden Valley is unincorporated. So how do we as the residents get assured that those monies will go to Golden Valley and not Kingman, where the majority of the Angle Homes representatives reside? Um, so that is my concern. Um, we don't have assurances that we will directly benefit from this. However, we will feel the impact. With um, traffic, 68 is littered with memorials for people who have um, passed there. So there will probably have to be traffic lights, um, you know, we enjoy the stars. That's why we moved here. There is an ordinance to have the lights down at a certain time. Um, so those are things that we will be losing. Um, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Liz Randolph. If, you, if your name has been called, would you please stand up here because we're trying to save time. Go Good morning. My name's Liz Randolph, address 1113 South Dewey Golden Valley. Um, I'm opposing this building um, due to quite a few different issues. We have issues with our water out here, and um, it, the prices are already high. You're going to be bringing in probably, what, a total of 3,000 homes 
coming in here and I don't think our water system can hold up to that. Um, also our power out here, um, you guys are talking about putting solar in. Um, that's, there's not gonna be enough power to supply these homes. Our roads are already potholed. The road going from Golden Valley into Kingman the other day was backed up all the way from the freeway 40 all the way to Golden Valley. And you add more homes in there, it's gonna get ridiculous. And then on top of the construction of the new freeway, all this construction is gonna cause a lot of dust, a lot of traffic, um, put really burden on our medical that we take months just to get in to see your own doctor. Where are all these people gonna find doctors? They keep talking about property taxes. That's where all these resources are gonna come from. All of us here moved to Golden Valley for being in a rural area, not houses that are on top of each other that are gonna take the resources away. Please, please don't approve this. But if in your hearts you feel you have to, don't allow them to have the houses so close. At least barter with them for larger lots, make them put solar on top of the houses, make them build a pump station for the sewage. If they want to make money off this, they're going to have to put money into it. But as far as I'm concerned, we don't need this. We don't want this. They're going to build, build in an area that already has the resources. Kingman, down in Bullhead, where there's grocery stores. We don't want grocery stores up here. We don't need large areas. Thank you. Don't want to go over my time. Thank you. No. Name and address, please. James Jones from Kingman, Arizona. I, um, I'm against this program to bring in so many people, even if it is a, a dribble. The county's not anywhere near prepared for anything at this uh, level in this area. I don't believe the planning is there. You're putting a cart before a horse in many of these areas. You're also putting uh, uh, the building pr process from the top to the bottom when it should be built at the bottom. You can't build a house without a, without a foundation. And I think the county planning has to be improved and give these uh, gentlemen that are trying to do their work a little bit of more uh, of an ease. I talked to them at the last uh, meeting and I saw the problems that they were having. Not only that, I don't think the county is taking in consideration the people. The people should be first. What the people want should be very, very much uh, listened to and took, taken into consideration. This is, this is not something that is um, mandatory. It doesn't have to be done. It, it, it should, needs to be planned. And I'm totally against it at this time for what, the way it's being handled. I don't see it as being uh, uh, available, uh, low-income housing, and I don't think we have a housing shortage here in Kingman in Mojave County. Thank you. Thank you. I, we next one, uh, no, we want to have everybody have their, their, their time to speak. This is just wasting time, so don't do it. Uh, Brad Mays, uh, and then behind him, I want Michelle Bernard. And behind Michelle, I'm please separated. Um, I think it's Wayne, Wayne Hollins. So first up is Brad Mays. Waiting, but I didn't hear my name earlier. Brad Mays, I'm a resident of Golden Valley and I live directly across from the proposed project on Zuni, to be specific. I didn't know we could do pictures or anything. Is it okay if I put some down here? Sure. So one year ago, April of 23, we bought this acreage, this property directly across from the proposed. We cleared the land, we added septic and water. We're planning to build our retirement home. I don't know if it comes up there, but if you can see the view that I have, an unobstructed view of the mountains, and from seeing already what I've seen from Angle Homes, uh, I can expect to see a block wall, six feet or so, take away my view of the mountains. Right from I'm less than 300 feet away from the project. So I'm just saying that, um, I agree with everybody about the water rights and everything else, but also we're talking about Golden Valley and I didn't move to Golden Valley to be in a big city with high rises or be blocked. I 
bought the property specifically for this view, and it's being taken away from me. So that's all I have. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Michelle Berard. I live at 4694 Glen Canyon Road. We're 300 feet away. As this gentleman had said, he's going to lose his view. This is why we chose. We looked around. We checked out Kingman out in the outskirts everywhere. We chose Golden Valley because it was a small town and rural area. We moved here two months ago. We never received a notice that this was happening. How we found out that this was going to happen was a, the company came by, planted signs, and then that's how we found out. And then the letters went out to family members that live out here, and they shared it with us via text. We came here from Southern California in the high desert in Hesperia. The, reason, the main reason why we left is because they built and are still processing a building of a community that is so three times larger than what they want here. We then were notified by our city that they were going to come take some of our property for intimate domain to put a signal light, make the roads four across every which way. So our property value went down. We weren't given as much money as we should have when we sold our home. But we chose Arizona because the people here in Arizona, every time we came out and visited, stayed in Laughlin, came out and visited parents, went all over the place, did our vacations out here and out to the Grand Canyon. And everybody was wonderful. Everybody is so kind, so friendly. They still are. But you put that in and you put low, house, low income housing, all that money that we chose to save to retire, our family members that saved and moved from Washington to retire to this beautiful small little valley, we're going to lose it all. Thank you. Thank you. May, may I ask, Madam Chair, just a quick question. It's just a yes or no from the applicant. Low income housing or affordable housing? Affordable. Thank you. My name is Wayne Holland, 4825 North Mormon Flat Road, uh, Golden Valley. I'm Ms. a 10 year just rev. One second. Uh, I need uh, Elizabeth. Um, gee, I can't read that. Am I? Maybe it's Miller. Yes. Uh, and Mary Ann Campbell. Please. Go ahead. I'm sorry, sir. No problem. <clears throat> I'm a 10 year resident of, of Golden Valley, and I moved out there because of what it looked like pretty much right now. Um, I have many questions, one being how much carbon is going to be released into the atmosphere when they clear all that land to put those houses out there? What's going to happen to all the desert animals that live there now? Water, 3,000 homes, that's 750,000 gallons per day just for domestic use, and that's not including if they have a garden and what have you. That's just taking a bath and drinking water. Um, Going to put new channels for the, for the water to go in? No. Put in rain gardens and, and water tanks so the water stays on the land instead of running off the land and being used. <clears throat> have no place to go in. You get an inch of rain on 1,400 acres out there, that's 38 million gallons of water. It ain't going to have no place to go because you're going to have it all with houses and pavement and stuff. <clears throat> then we have schools, roads, fire, police, more, more stuff going to the landfill, more people dumping in the desert. <clears throat> what are we doing for the heat island effect that's going to have that many homes in, a, in that small of an area? I think we need to consider more than just building houses and profit and taxes. We need to take a look at our environment also. So much more consideration is needed for that. There's no need for 3,000 homes on that small of an acreage out there. It, it's a rural community. We'd like to keep it as a rural community. So please consider that when you make your decision. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good morning, commissioners. 
My name is Elizabeth Miller, and I live at 3194 West McConaughey Road, Golden Valley. I am greatly concerned about the tremendous impact Angle Homes will have if their zoning request is approved. Following are some statistics to consider at today's meeting. According to the U.S. Census Bureau in 2022, Golden Valley consists of 78.7 square miles with a population of 7,900 people at a median age of 62.3 years with an annual household income of $45,000. As of 2021, the U.S. Census Bureau states the average size of family in the United States is 3.13 persons. Angle Homes is planning to build 3,000 houses on 1,400 acres in Golden Valley. 1,400 acres equals 2.188 square miles. Using these statistics, 3,000 homes times 3.13 persons, the Angle Homes development could increase the population of Golden Valley by 9,930. The bottom line is these 9,930 people will be confined in a two square mile area compared to 7,900 people in the remaining 76.8 square miles. I request the commission deny their request and limit the size of their lots to no less than one plus acres. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. <clears throat> I have um, Marianne Campbell and behind her is Melissa Martina and it looks like Bruce Hopkins. You may go, ma'am. Good morning. My name is Marianne Campbell. I live at 4496 Cove Road. It's um, on the corner of Cove and Zuni. So looking at the map that I was sent across the road from my home, which is within the 300 feet, I'm going to be looking at retail and businesses right there across from my house. I bought my house because it's rural and I can see mountains all the way around my home and uh, I opposed this. Um, I have farm animals which will be affected by all the traffic and the noise of building 660 houses and retail across the road from my house so i oppose this thank you thank you good afternoon everyone my name is Melissa Martinez, and I currently reside at 4810 North Ehrenberg Road in Golden Valley. I come before you today to let you know of my previous experience with Box Springs Mutual Water Company as a general manager. We, I am professionally responsible for redesigning and reconstruction failing organizations in the state of California. I came here approximately six months ago with my family of six for a better way of living. All of a sudden, we have Angle Homes trying to come in within a couple blocks of my residence to bring in 3,000 residences. As the previous residents of Golden Valley have explained, 3,000, is a, that's a big number. We also are failing to mention that this proposed development is being implemented in right directly of the Sacramento Wash. We all know what Sacramento Wash is, as do you. Without that proper drainage, that should be required in the proposed EIR as well as the prelims, we have an issue. We also have an issue with, like everyone said, roads, traffic, that's concern. I also have an issue with sewage. Currently, right now, we are all in Golden Valley underneath septic. Is anybody aware that the average household dissipates 45 gallons a day when it comes to septic? We would have to have that pumped. Where's that gonna go? Who knows? Who can answer that for me? I come before you today to ask and request that you deny this proposed project. However, if in the future they would like to redesign that project and go back to the drawing board, that's a completely acceptable response. However, at this time, 3,000 is a no-go. Thank you. 
Thank you. Bruce. I have Bruce Hopkins, Danielle Oli, o -O, um, and Kathleen Joy. So the first one is Bruce Hopkins. Good morning. I'm glad that you're all here with your ears wide open. Your name and address, please. My name is Bruce Hopkins. <laughs> 4815 West Chino. I want to start by saying life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, not property. I came down here to retire, and I'm not happy. The first time I was not happy was when they changed 68 and the traffic increased tenfold on the road that runs in front of my house. There's two roads that go away from Chino, Aztec and Adobe, and they're in terrible repair. And I want you to know that every elected official has a duty to protect our rights. And that's what you're here today to do for us, because we do not want this project to go. Is it stick bill homes they're bringing in, or is it trailer track? I live in a trailer myself, but we don't need 22,000 of them. And all I heard from them, they came into this area with not a clue. I don't care if they're from here. 1,400 acres, and all I heard was, we need, we need, we need, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna. They don't have a plan. We don't have the infrastructure. We don't have the public utilities. We don't have the, uh, the uh, I was going to talk about, uh, I forgot my uh, luck. This is raw desert where we are. And the people that talked about the critters stole my thunder. The, the tortoises are protected, and so are the little burrowing owls, owls that we have. These are endangered species. And these guys have no plans. They've done no, well, anyway. Thank you, sir. Do your duty. Thank you. Thank you. I have uh, Danielle. <laughs> Don't applaud. I've asked you not to do it. Don't do it. <coughs> Name and address, please. Can I get the camera up? Um, Danielle Oliquet, Golden Valley, 3808 North Stewart Mountain Road. I'm about a, less than a quarter mile from this proposal south. I first want to start by looking at letters of support for this item. If you can put that up on the screen. A lot of them have no addresses, no last names listed, and a bunch of them are also from Angles. Todd Richardson, who is Angle Homes um, Vice President of Construction. You're upside down. Can we switch that? And then we also have Nicholas Diaz, superintendent for Engel Homes. Sean Hoffman, who is the accounting manager for Engel Homes. We have Gary Lawson, who's actually a senior engineering technician for Mojave County Public Works and president of GV Lawson in Kingman. He no we, longer works for Mojave County. We have Jeff McNeven, construction manager for Engel Homes. We have Brandon Pease, who also spoke already this morning, who's VP of Sales. And we also have Jack, Scott Jackson, who also spoke earlier, who's Engel Homes VP of Finance. And we have Sal Taimua, who is a personal builder for Engel Homes. So I wanna make it clear that the commu community meeting that we had was not put on by them. I asked them for the meeting specifically. I found the location. Um, we worked with good people in the community who provided the sound. And at first they told us that they did not wanna negotiate with people in Golden Valley um, to tell them how to spend their millions of dollars. At our community meeting, not only did Engel Homes not have any details about their plans, they couldn't even provide us a simple map with the location. It seemed as if no effort was put forward on their part to truly address the community's concerns. I've asked Mr. Pennington multiple times if they would be willing to increase the lot sizes to keep the AR zoning, which would better fit into the current community, which they have declined. I also asked if they would be willing to withdraw their application until Golden Valley has had their opportunity to meet with the Planning and Zoning Department in June, where they're going to be updating the general plan. 
Um, please don't work with de developers who have already says, shown such a lack of regard for residents. And here's the community petitions that we've collected in opposition. Thank you. Um, oh, I, I, one moment, please. Could you uh, go back to the podium for a second? Ma'am. Go back to the podium for a second. Why, 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 why are you pointing out where all these people were? Why is their opinion less valid than yours? Because it seems like a conflict of interest. I'm going to say that this is a point of order because we are in a public hearing portion of this. We can oh. ask for questions after okay. it's closed, okay? Okay, thank I you. Thank you. Thank you. And this is Kathleen. And behind her is Connie Holtz and Salem Osored. I know I did that terrible. I can just barely see you. <laughs> I'm a little thing, but I'm mighty when it comes to issues like this. Okay. Name and address, please. Hi, I'm Kathleen Joy, 3620 North Mormon Flat Road, Golden Valley. I live about a quarter of a mile away from where they want to do this. I am totally opposed to it. Many reasons. Water, our beautiful surrounding area, it's going to be gone. It's going to be destroyed. The wildlife, it's too much. I'm not against building. I am for responsible building. One acre or more, period. That's it. Please turn it down. Thank you. Thank you. This would be Salem. Good morning. My name is Salim Osorio. I reside at 3590 North Bowie Road in Golden Valley. I uh, came over here and I retired in Golden Valley four years ago because of the rural area. And uh, I retired from a uh, environmental company. I uh, work with the water companies, uh, drinking water, wastewater. And one of the concerns is if you're going to put a waste treatment plant, where are you going to do it? Are you going to do it next to the, to the homes? Nobody wants to live next to a poop house. That's pretty, pretty I mean, come on. Uh, I have, I, I used to teach, and I used to take people over there to, uh, to do tours of a waste treatment plant. It's not a pretty sight. And the smell is very awful. And you're going to put all these people who are living there already through all that? I don't think it should be. It's not fair. Now, all I hear is, how much, how much money in taxes you're going to make? Well, why don't they just go ahead and go outside of Kingman? You're going to get more revenue then because the taxes are a little bit higher here in Kingman than there is in Golden Valley. And then we have the water infrastructure. I mean, come on. Uh, we have, uh, is the uh, school uh, board going to uh, afford to be able to put a couple of more schools in there? We don't need any grocery stores. And, you know, we're all retired people just about in, in here. And uh, we don't need that. I don't mind coming over here to Kingman to do my shopping. And uh, the only thing I can tell you is that this is the wrong thing to do. And please do not approve this. Thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> Kathy. And behind her is Sean Messner again. Hello, my name is Connie Hulse. And I live at 4455 North Laguna Road just across the street from the proposed development, and I'm standing here in opposition to it. I'm not against progress, but I feel the developer saw easy money. He saw a large swath of vacant land not located in the city with fewer governmental restrictions and fewer services making the land cheaper. He also saw the zoning restrictions when he purchased the land. He can easily prosper by developing this land within its current zoning restrictions. We have lived at our residence for almost 20 years. We, have, we could have purchased in Kingman or just outside of Kingman, but we chose to purchase and build upon land that was roughly 20 miles from town. We chose land that had larger parcel zoning restrictions because we did not want to live in an urban environment. Section 19, page 47 of the Mojave County Zoning Ordinance states, 
that R1 is intended to allow single-family resident uses in urban lots. Section 21, page 50, states that R2 is intended as an area primarily for medium density residential use with a minimum lot size of 4,000 square feet. <laughs> it goes on to say that it is appropriate for existing single-family neighborhoods having typically moderate-sized lot patterns. There is not one lot in the area that is smaller than one acre or 43,560 square feet. That means that the proposed zoning change would allow for lots that are 10 times smaller. I think everyone in this room would consider these lots high density. I have several concerns with the high density housing proposal before you. They are as follows. This the sewer system, I can only assume, is the, is the parcels that they want to rezone for commercial use that's directly across the street from my house. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Sean Mesner. And behind him is uh, Lisa, it looks like McDonald. Chairman, committee. Um, Sean Meisner, Kingman, Arizona. Uh, this is really simple. Angle Home started at 7,500 homes, and now they're going, trying for 3,000 homes. Um, I say no. Try again. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa McDonald, 4906 North Elgin Road, Golden Valley, and that's within the GVID also. I wrote the open petition, petition opposing this. And Dan, Daniel Olay has collected a lot of signatures for that too. The in-person version, this, as of this morning, there were 190 opposed signatures. And I would like to turn what Mr. Angle has, has been saying against Mr. Angle. He's a CPA. He came up here. He did bean counting for you. He said that right now we're paying X amount in taxes. But hey, if you approve this, you're going to collect this amount of taxes. Then you had somebody else saying, and the property values are going to go up. How's that affordable housing? People in Golden Valley moved out there to move rural. Many of us are religious, and we believe that God commanded us to be stewards of the earth, to fit in with nature and to live with our nature. They want to come in and listen to the other guy. Hey, I'm going to come in, I'm, I'm going to plan this subdivision, and we're going to wipe out everything God did, and we're going to make it as what we want. That's not being Christian. That's not following God. What they're doing is they're putting profit above common sense, common decency, and about what real affordable living is. Thank you. Thank you. We have George um, Loya, uh, Brian Holland, and John something Shanks. I really apologize, but you guys don't print very well. Mm -hmm. Name and address, please. George Loya, Golden Valley, Arizona. Location, location, location is what we're talking about here. What they're trying to build is what they have all around the rest of the country. And we don't need that here. We like it the way it is. We like it rural. We want to keep it. If they want to develop that piece of property as a one acre like the rest of us have or more, it's fine with us. But. A subdivision, 3,000 homes? I don't see it. That's my opinion. Thank you, sir. Brian Holland. My name is John. Um, it look, maybe it's Crick Shank. And Jennifer Esposito. Brian Holland, 4762 North Milling Canyon. I am directly across the street from the development. I highly oppose this. Uh, you guys. I've already heard all the angles against the angle. Uh, please just consider us. Consider what it's going to do for the wildlife. Consider what it's going to do for the environmental impact. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, my name is John Crookshanks. I'm from Kingman. Uh, problem I have with this is right now there's it takes three months to get in to see a doctor for anything. 
Doctors are leaving. They come here, get their training, and then they're out of here because it's overwhelming for all the doctors here. They ain't got enough water out there. They ain't got stuff for sewage out there. And this is just a grab. If we don't vote Donald Trump in for president, <laughs> Joe Biden got all these houses sitting out there. Who says they they ain't gonna purchase them and move all these illegals in here? <laughs> we the people are pissed. Thank you. Jennifer. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman, Board. Jennifer Esposito, candidate for District 4, County Supervisor, 3211 East Snavely Avenue, and a property owner in the Golden Valley Improvement District, where this uh, proposed a high density subdivision is uh, before you today. I would like to point out that um, while there is currently enough water in the Sacramento Valley Aquifer, there are not enough water allotments available within the special taxing district to sell angle homes. There are only approximately, I would guess, at this particular moment, somewhere between 407 and 410 water allocations. I know this because I've litigated against the county regarding GVID, and it is on the September agenda to appoint myself, Danielle, Mr. Butch Merriweather, and two other people to take over the board of the Golden Valley Improvement District. Before they can even build these homes, they would require the board of GVID to petition ADEQ for the extra water allocations. They have not done that. As has been said, they put the cart before the horse. I would also like to point out that in 2022, uh, on March 7th, the Board of Supervisors approved another rezone for Angle Homes um, in the uh, outside of the GVID on, uh, I believe it was about 75 acres for about another 300 homes. They have, are, have been expanding an existing subdivision in Golden Valley where there is a definite sewage odor problem that all of the neighbors complain about in ship estates. So it's not like we are not getting housing in Golden Valley. I would also like to point out to this board that um, the uh, housing study, which identified that we have a housing crisis, that um, Angle Homes was on that board helping to make that determination. And so these are facts that this board needs to know. Uh, being that I will be appointed to the board, if you have any questions about GVID, please recall me. Thank you. Thank you. David Looper and Jack Shelton. Yes, my name is David Looper. I live at 3525 Salt Road in Golden Valley, and I'm an ex-fireman, fire marshal, etc. Arizona in the Golden Valley, we do not have water. You people denied a bashes market in our town in Golden Valley because there was not enough water to supply it. So all of a sudden we have 3,000 houses where does the water come to supply 3,000 houses, but not one market? It will be doubling the usage almost of the existing valley to put these houses in, which will amount to combined between the two, all but over 1 billion gallons of water a year for that division and the existing city. Where does it come from? And it goes down every year as they build more because you're going to have people coming in and building on the one acre lots. So it's not just this division. It is the entire valley. I don't know where the water will come from. And when we go dry, the whole place is a ghost town. And we're all out no matter how much money they bring in, how many dentist offices they can build. We go bust. And it's water that will kill it and you people have the authority. You did it before just for a market. Please do it for a division that drives everybody out of the valley. Thank you.
Jack Shelton. Jack Shelton, 5173 North Cibola. Um, I was notified by notices on a property. I looked into it a little bit. I never got a letter from anybody. Um, I have three daughters. I know who all my neighbors are. And the impact is about a quarter mile from my home. So I'm currently raising a one-year-old, an eight-year-old, and a nine-year-old daughter. So what's the impact of 3,000 homes at the end of my property? I'm a builder. I understand. I understand progress, hope. But I also, you know, I've been out there two years. I've done my homework. We, were, we did have four wells. We're down to two. Um, so where's the water coming from? I assume, you know, 3,000 homes in that small area, it's probably going to smell like downtown Bullhead with the septic problems. Um, and I don't understand why they would want to build 4.8 miles off the highway in the middle of nowhere. Why not build alongside the road? That way the sheriff can get the trash out of there a little bit sooner should they need to. Instead of putting that on me and my neighbors who are all Vietnam vets who won't play very many games for very long. It's a negative impact on our community. If you want to put something in there, start them at an acre or two acres like everybody else. That way we can get an influx. I know who all my neighbors are. They know who I am. And we'd like to keep it that way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, uh, having no more requests to speak, I'm going to close the public hearing. Um, it out? seems to me that the primary objection here is the size of the lots and the amount of people that we're talking I um, personally think that we should do something and make this one acre lots. Okay. Um, we, want the, um, we want the applicant please to come back to the podium. Um, Commissioner Barton. You have a question? I have some comments for the applicant. Being that you hear the concerns of the community, and I just find that you have no like rendering of where you're planning to put commercial versus residential. Did we receive anything like that? Um, so what we're asking for is uh actually matches the general packet. It, 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 oh. it should just be the picture of the general plan. So that's it exactly. And the interesting thing about the general plan is since we're asking exactly for it, we don't have to change it. If we were made to do acres lot, acre lots, that conflicts with the general plan. So we, we can't go straight, straight to a, a zoning for acres. We'd have to start over and do that, but but it wouldn't work for us to do to do acres economically anyhow. Please hold down the comments. Um, they didn't talk while you were trying to talk. Um, is any other questions, uh, Commissioner Bradshaw? Can, have we have we seen the staff report? Has staff done a presentation on this yet? I don't see any exhibits? Yeah, they went through some initial ones. Did you? Um, I have no more requests. Uh, Commissioner Bradshaw. Uh, okay, so, um, so this is a this is a, a zone change request. Um, this is a first step toward a master plan community, um, and to your point, it matches the general the general plan. Um, and and I'm general. I'm I'm actually a big fan of master plan communities because they bring together a sense of cohesiveness um, of, of the ideas. Oh, we're back now. Sorry. Um, they improve the water system, they sewer, uh, community, infrastructure, the roads, the drainage systems. That's what that's what master plan communities are slated to do. If you don't do a master plan community. You basically have 1,400 lots, new lots, that don't do any of this. That's dangerous. Um, they provide district areas for increased economy, com commercial districts. They purposely maintain open space and create parks and trail systems for public. 
All told, master plan communities create a sense of community, community that large track parcels really can't. But here's the challenge that I have is I, I'm looking for more information. I, I like to see master plan communities come in with a development agreement, uh, a full set of um, improvement ideas. Uh, and, and so these are the, th and I, I understand why there's so much, so much concern and angst by the, by the, the neighbors because there's, there's no, there's, there's no cohesive manner that you're bringing to the, to the, to the table. And, and that does concern me as far as a master plan community. Gotcha. Yeah. So like a development agreement, for instance, would, would have to be down the road. We couldn't enter into a development agreement with the county if we didn't have the, the zoning correct yet um so eventually that that could be a step in the road same with figuring out the utilities um the, the gvid for instance we are planning to have to invest a lot of money into the improvements to to make the water available for for this area but we can't can't do that part and give millions of dollars to gvid and a, a new tank or a new well unless we have have this first and so we just feel like this is the first step if we don't have the zoning we can't can't get to the other stuff quite yet so okay on on that if you'll indulge me uh, uh, again um chair chairperson um so here's here's my concern because a lot of times i see these developments come in and there's a buffer between these large track parcels and some of the some of the more dense areas um which which you cannot do based on the general plan that to me is problematic um are you do you do you do you maintain a dark sky compliant um, light package? That's in the development agreement. Um, low low impact landscaping. That's in the development agreement. These are some you know even even impact fees toward completed public amenities, so that you get the value of the public amenities as opposed to um, some other place in in the county. That's useful in a development agreement. I. I really am interested in, in a development agreement in these types of in these types of master planned communities that perhaps have to change the general plan and perhaps have to change update the zoning and it might take a little bit more time and energy and money in the long run you don't have 500 people showing up against your project that's my concern um commissioner morris do we agree that the rezoning process is kind of necessary for us to provide a plan to be able to show over everybody and answer questions? I understand. We need to understand what our zoning is so that we can design that. I, I guess my significant question would be, does the general plan take into account, because you're asking for just the zoning per the general plan, does the general plan take into account the necessary infrastructure both in physical placement and capabilities to match what you're proposing here for 2,000, 3,000, whatever. I, I keep hearing numbers all over the place. Um, individual units. Uh, and we've got to have a fairly significant wastewater treatment plant. Uh, of course, a lot of water system improvements. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so all of the areas would be private property that, that we would own. And so whatever amount of area we need for retention, for a sewer treatment plant, for water improvements, we would be ready to provide that. And I assume the county would, would be happy to work with us if, if uh, five acres needs to be a specific zoning for sewer, then we, then we fix that if we need to, if it can't fit within, within um, the current, current zonings. Um, but but I think it, it can fit. Well, and, and that was one of my other questions of basically of staff is that the exhibit <coughs> that was put in the documents for review by the, in the packet, um, I had a black and white exhibit basically for all of these zones, almost impossible to discern what zone goes to what color uh, or shade of gray that's on there. Um, it was hard for for me to, to to figure out where you're actually asking for an R1 or an R2 a commercial uh, of the 1,400 acres. I would much prefer to see a 
rather detailed map of showing here's what it currently is and here's what we're going to. Yeah, we have we have the general plan uh, reflected up here, the, the different designations, if, if you're interested in seeing those areas. That's the, the, uh, the one that we have, but it's, it's a little bit better than the re than we have in the packet. To that uh, self-correcting me mechanism and process, right? We believe a former commission and a former board of supervisors years ago in the mid-2000s approved this general plan the way it sits, right? I'm sure there was multiple public hearings that got this way. When we were doing our due diligence and we looked at this property and looked at the existing general plan, there was this realization that we could live with what that was. Right? Sometimes amending the general plan, especially when you're talking a, a possibly major amendment to the general plan, is is years long process, right? So we, this part of our due diligence, looked at what this, what the general plan showed for Golden Valley, what the residents in Gold that are here today are asking for, is. That's what 95% of the existing general plan is for, Gold, for Golden Valley already is. This yellow area is our project, right? Very, so what we're asking you to do is approve what former, former commissions and former board of supervisors have approved in, with the general plan. So you don't have any master plan, roadway infrastructure, lot configuration, area configuration, bubble diagram, anything? Yeah, so we haven't engineered it yet because we don't know if we're allowed to to do that. If we're, I'm not going to go spend millions of dollars to 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 do a study on the drainage and the roads and then give you all those plans if I don't know if I'm even allowed to build that. So well, this is just the, the first due diligence. step. Uh, that's what you do for due diligence. Uh, I do it on a regular basis. I'm retiring now, so I'm not going to do it anymore. But. Uh, I've yeah, we just we just didn't feel, feel it's wise because if if uh, the you guys and the the board deny it, then then it would just be wasted to to go do a drainage study right now. It it really is regulated by the county's subdivision rules. There's statutory requirements for drainage. You take the number of acreage, the density, and multiply it by a statutory factor, and that's how many acre feet you have to retain for a hundred year storm. So it's all required and part of the, the subdivision um, rules in order to get approved. So drainage is 100% gonna be dealt with then. Same with traffic. As part of the subdivision ordinance, I have to get a TIA, a traffic um, impact analysis. I have to hire third-party traffic engineers. They do the study, they tell us where the roads go, and then the county's traffic engineers, they review it and then we, we adjust it, make sure everyone agrees. And so most of that is, is part of the, the subdivision process that they have rules on, on how to do it all. Well, maybe so, I've been doing it wrong for 40 years, but usually, <laughs> usually I get a, a, at least a bubble diagram that shows me the areas that we're going to serve, how we're going to do it. And we put up, you know, as a civil engineer, we basically lay out the, the roadway and the, and the general utility corridors, not designing the pipes, doing any of that, just this is where this is going to go. It's going to bleed down to here. We're going to have a treatment plant over here. We got a off-site water tank we got to take care of um, all along. And that's generally done before we even go in for a zoning case yeah. on, on anything that's this size. You know, 100 acres up basically gets that kind of criteria. Thank you. Chair. You're welcome. Um, Commissioner Hubbard. With uh, the size of this, the dirt work, which is expensive, infrastructure, you're going to have to put in everything. And you talk about affordable or low income, what, just what do you call a low, low affordable housing? That's not, you're not talking 2195 like we did back in the, you're talking about a couple hundred thousand. Who's, who's going to afford yeah. that? So 
Low-income housing is generally a government term for uh, government subsidized rental programs. So we don't do any sort of low-income housing because we don't do apartments or for rent. Affordable housing is usually for homes for sale. And so that's where we try and um, satisfy that market. We just try and get the, the prices as low as we can so people can afford them. Right now, that's in the low 200,000s um, around the, the area. <laughs> If uh, I could do a, a home for 150, I, I certainly would right now. I've I've seen these uh, projects go for a long time, and I've seen a lot of communities fall. And uh, when you talk about affordable, just how much would I have to make as a policeman or fireman or teacher to afford three fifty five hundred thousand dollar house? I don't know offhand. I don't know either what you would qualify for if you made that's what we're talking about this project is is going to put a big burden on the people that live there uh, i have to go along with some of these other people here um I, I do it. thank you very much i have one more speaker who wants to speak so um if you you I may be called back again um, so I'm going to open the public hearing and call Kathy Teehee to the podium. Name and address, please. Good morning, and thank you for giving me this opportunity. My, my name is Kathy Teehee. I live at 4293 North Laguna Road. I have lived in Golden Valley for approximately five years. I live directly across the street from this proposed development. I am opposing this for the reasons that I came here for a rural lifestyle. I've lived in a rural lifestyle for approximately 40 years. I have horses, dogs, cats, goats, you name it, chickens. I've had all these animals. That's the kind of lifestyle they came to Golden Valley to keep in my retirement because it is a good place for those of us that want to retire in this community. Um, I don't want any, any lot sizes less than about an acre and a half. Um, I think we need to look at the water infrastructure for our area. The infrastructure is very important. Our electrical grid, internet services, all these services are very important. Water being the number one, because there are a lot of us that do have a lot of different animals on our property, and we rely on that water as a source for our animals, for their livelihood, our own livelihood. Um, I'm not opposed to actual development, but one acre lots at a minimum. I think we need to look back at the general plan and revisit that. I don't think it fits the needs of our community, the people that have moved there, the people that are coming there. Um, I just would like it to keep a rural community. I don't want this type of development. I would have moved to Kingman or to Bullhead or somewhere else if I wanted to live on a postage stamp lot. There are owls out there. I walk that acreage directly across the street from my home on a regular basis. The neighbors, we ride our horses out there. People use their off-road vehicles in that area as well. Um, I have seen the owls. I've seen the snakes. I've seen the coyotes. I've seen the range cattle out there. I mean, there's actually a lot of wildlife that live in that area. So please take our community and what we would like to see in our neighborhood, not just what Angle Home wants to give us. Thank you, ma'am. I'm gonna close the public hearing. Yes. Madam Chair, Commissioners, I just wanted to, as staff, kind of answer some of the questions that have been asked of the commissioners um, and kind of clarify a few things as far as, as the county is concerned. Uh, just a couple things as far as design standards. Mojave County doesn't have any uh, landscape design standards. Uh, we also do not have any impact fees. And we do also do not require any environmental impact statements or studies um, as far as the um, vegetation or animals that might be in the area. They, we do have Arizona Game and Fish, like mentioned before. They have standards as far as... Um, protected animals or creatures on, on site that um, they do have a permitting process that you can go through to protect some of those um, 
animals, but as far as Mojave County is concerned, that's not something that we require. Um, to kind of go over some of the concerns as far as infrastructure um, and what um, uh, the concerns that the, the public has spoken on today, uh, Mojave County um, sees the, the rezoning process as the first process um, in obtaining uh, approvals for a project like this. Uh, so making sure that uh, the use is allowed on site. Um, going from there, we look at in each individual um, preliminary plat and um, subdivision plat that comes to the county, uh, <coughs> making sure that they do have the adequate infrastructure for each phase of development within that project. Um, if there's any improvements that need to be made off-site, including roads to the site, that would have to be um, improved by the developer at their cost, uh, as well as any infrastructure for um, a wastewater treatment facility, water improvements. Uh, Mojave County would not approve, even if they have the zoning and the general plan in place, we're not going to approve a project that does not meet our standards for uh, traffic, roads, uh, water, wastewater. Uh, when they get to the subdivision plat process, if they don't meet our requirements, we're not going to approve the subdivision, even if the zoning is in place. Um, I think those were the, the comments that I wanted to address. If you have any additional questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Do. Any I do. questions? I do. Do. Uh, Okay, oh, Commissioner Martin. Could these people in the community speak with the supervisors to amend the general plan to incorporate it more towards one acre lots? Um, Madam Chair, Commissioners, um, we currently are in the process of updating the general plan, as mentioned before. Uh, at the end of today's meeting, we are presenting our plan for the update of our general plan. We have to update the general plan every 10 years. Um, we are now in the process of doing that. We will be holding a specific uh, meeting for the Golden Valley area um, in, in the next coming month, months, and we will uh, take any and all um, suggestions for the area plan or the, the general plan for that area at, at that meeting. Um, the commission is also going to be creating a subcommittee for the, the general plan update, update. So a few of you will be part of the general plan update committee meeting that we will hold on a monthly basis to take in some of these comments that we've received and to apply them to our, our general plan. So there is a process in updating the general plan. Um, to do a major amendment, it's, it's quite uh, intense and requires um, more than just somebody going in and talking to the Board of Supervisors, but it can be dealt with and handled through this general plan update that we're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Um, Commissioner Hass uh, Hassett. Yep. Um, so just for clarification purposes, I listened to everything that you said and, and all of their concerns as well as the applicant. So today, in the event that this gets approved, which is strictly a zoning, which staff is recommending that based solely on the zoning and the surrounding areas, what they're attempting to do doesn't mean that they get to build a road tomorrow. doesn't mean that they get to build a house. They get to start the lengthy process of the subdivision of building a subdivision within Mojave County, which is a, a much different path to travel. Correct. Yes. So with that being said, a, even if it does get approved today, the board of supervisors could reject it on their meeting the they could not they could do their study and realize this isn't feasible and they could go put the land up for sale and someone else can deal with it b they could have requirements set forth by the county on their subdivision planning that would um, answer all the questions needed for water retention for curb and gut whatever it is right so i just want some clarification on that madam chair commissioner has that's correct um the, the zoning that is being approved or the approved or denied today is just the first step. And once, uh, once past this process, there is quite a significant process as, as far as getting traffic impact analysis, drainage studies, and um, anything else that would be required for the infrastructure for any proposed development in that area. Today's rezoning application is not to 
start building or do anything along those lines just to start the process to see if this is even something is possible. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Any question? So the uh, general plan is updated every sure. 10 years. Is that correct? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Rugi, that's correct. We have, by state statute, we have to update the general plan every 10 years, do a, a major update uh, of the entire general plan. We do minor amendments throughout the year, and you'll see those uh, at this commission and at the Board of Supervisors on a regular basis. If an individual is looking to rezone their property and it doesn't match the general plan, what it currently is, then they would have to do a general plan amendment along with that rezone. Um, and we see those at the commission and the board uh, quite often. Something of this size, um, over 1,400 acres, would, uh, I, think, I think, require the major plan amendment. We'd have to double check that. But something larger does have to go through a, a more intense process. Um, uh, but as a requirement by state statute, we will update the entire general plan uh, every 10 years. All right. So this last time that this was approved all of these procedures were followed you had hearings you had input from everybody so what what we're looking at is something that has been approved and been studied before madam chair commissioner Ruggie, that's correct when this general plan was adopted um i believe it was in the early 2000s that they were wanted to they, they created the golden valley area plan within the the general plan um, so specific meetings were held, um, and it did go through quite an, an, an extensive process as far as uh, creating this specific plan for Golden Valley. Um, I think it was a couple years ago that we took that area plan and just merged it with our general plan. So it's the exact same plan that was approved for Golden Valley, but it's in just one document. Uh, in our general plan instead of being two separate documents. But yes, uh, uh, a process went, there was a process in getting that whole area um, approved with the, the land designations that they currently have. Um, Commissioner Bradshaw. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so my question is uh, toward, um, you're doing a general plan amendment, uh, you're in the process of it, so uh, this, so this could be done in the next year potentially. So that's, but but my but really my question is this: Do, is there a is there a process where a develop a large scale master plan development like this comes in through the county with a with a with a package that includes you know the zoning the the um, the aesthetics of what the houses look like the road master plans as as Commissioner Moore said. Um, the local utility master plans, et cetera, so that there is a lot more data on the table to, toward this, these type of approvals. Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner Bradshaw, we do have provisions within our zoning ordinance that allow for pad developments. Um, it's a similar process. As far as our zoning requirements are concerned, I don't think we uh, require that level of de detail, especially uh, Mojave County, we don't require we don't have design standards uh, throughout the entire entirety of the county um, but as far as uh, where commercial where residential would be i think are involved in those processes we did just do a development north of kingman along in white hills that came before this commission as well as the entrada development uh, that development went through a similar process uh, that we're going through today, except that they did have to do a major plan amendment to the general plan because the general plan wasn't already, um, uh, did not already contain the land designations that they were proposing. So they did the, the general plan, major plan up, update, which um, you can only do a certain period of, of the year. Um, and, then, and then did provide uh, the proposed land or the, the proposed rezones with the proposed densities, uh, they did not get into the detail of road infrastructure or um, utility infrastructure uh, like you're describing now. Thank you. Any other questions at this time? Okay. Um, 
we could make a motion to approve with a lot size. Is that correct? Madam Chair, uh, Commissioners, what is proposed before you is what is being, is the lot size, minimum lot size. So we have several zones that are being proposed. Yes. So it's not just everything is going to be uh, 6,000 square foot minimum lot size. Uh, currently in the proposed rezone, we're looking at R1, which does have a minimum lot size of 6,000, R2, which does have a minimum lot size of 4,000 square foot, uh, C2, that has a minimum lot size of 6,000 square foot, um, I, believe, I believe that's all of the, the zones that are being proposed. Um, so they do have that potential. That doesn't mean that each of those lots will be that size, uh, but that does match what the land designation has designated for, from the general plan. Um, I believe if the commission wanted to do something um, less or less intense, um, that is a possibility, but anything more intense w would have to be a completely separate um, and item. when you say less intense, more intense, what do you mean by that? Do you uh, mean, like, for instance, I believe that the, if these, these lots should be no smaller than an acre. So does that? So, <clears throat> Madam Chair, Commissioners, I believe if we get into going too large, like the one acre minimum, um, we wouldn't match our general plan and it wouldn't fit with what is being proposed. And so they would have to come and amend the general plan just to propose that. And so that would not be something that would be that we could allow for on this uh, agenda item. Okay, I will entertain a motion. I move to approve with staff recommendations. Stop. There is a procedure that must be followed, and you will be quiet while we follow it. I would second that motion. I have a motion by Commissioner Pertillo, seconded by Commissioner um, Brand New, Rugi. Rugi. <laughs> All in favor say aye. We need, aye. Just, aye. We need a roll call. Discussion. Oh, okay. Then let's have a discussion. Commissioner Edward. I don't think uh, a lot of considerations have been taken on this approval. I think it should be denied. I think my uh, opinion lies with the fact that the county has an approved general plan that the pub, there was public participation in developing and a developer is relying on that promise. And uh, that's kind of where I'm coming from. It I appears there are too many uh, changes they want to make. They don't want to make any changes. They don't want, to, they want to make a changes to one acres and all this other type of thing. It, it's it's, it's, it's on the general plan. It's in the general plan the this general way plan. right now. One at a time, please. I think there's a motion. There is. Right. Right. No, but this is discussion. Um, did you have something to say, Commissioner Bradshaw? No. All right. Then we will call for the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. We'll have a roll, roll call, please. Okay. Commissioner Hubbard? Nay. Nay. Commissioner Bradshaw? Yay. Yes. Commissioner Helms? Aye. Commissioner Barlow? Commissioner Morse? Nay. Chairperson Gillette? Nay. Vice Chair Hassett? Aye. Commissioner Patillo? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Nay. Commissioner Rugi? Aye. Uh, it's five to four. It passes. passes. The motion passes. Um, however, please understand that this is our recommendation to the Board of Supervisors. You need to be at their meeting 
on Monday, April the, 5th, April the 15th at 9.30 in these chambers. And so that you can exit, I am going to call a recess of 15 minutes. Thanks. <laughs>
This meeting is called back to order. And we're having a, 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 a little change. We're going to move item 8 up. And we're going to do item 8 right now instead of, of doing item 4. So uh, staff report is by Alex Boland. Item 8 is an evaluation of a request for a special use permit for assessor's parcel number 20840109B to allow for an addition of a 150 foot square, square foot sign on an existing pole sign in a CMO, commercial manufacturing open lot storage zone in the Yucca vicinity. Staff recommends approval with standard conditions. Thank you. I'm gonna open the public hearing. Is the applicant present and do you wish to speak? Come to the podium, give us your name and your address, please. Michael Everett. 2211 Peck Road, Houston, Tech. Uh, the existing pole sign was approved on a, a, a another uh, special use permit previous to this one, and they're adding a truck shop, and they would just like to add their um, sign for Southern Tire Mart on the existing pole sign instead of putting another one in the ground and making all that sign colored. They're just asking for more space on the existing one. Okay. I'll answer any questions should you have any. Thank you. Uh, I do have one speaker, so if you would take a seat. You're, uh, uh, is your name Michael? I am Michael. Oh, you are Michael. So, uh, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't understand what you were saying. All right, thank you. Um, is, is anyone, do any of the commissioners have any questions? No? No. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. I'm gonna close the public hearing and ask for a motion. Make a motion to approve item eight per staff recommendations. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Hassett, seconded <clears throat> by Commissioner Bradshaw. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you, sir. Item number four, Amy Patsy. Item number four is an evaluation of a request for a rezone of assessor's parcel number 30606106 from an AR agricultural residential zone to a C2 general commercial zone to build an HVAC office in the Golden Valley vicinity. Staff recommends approval with standard conditions. Thank you. I'm going to open the, pre the public hearing and ask, is the applicant present and do you wish to speak? You're just here for questions, or do you want to speak? <clears throat> Name and address, please. Lorena Castañeda and Carlos Castañeda, 5453 West Chino Drive, Golden Valley, Arizona. Uh, good morning. I would like to first start by saying that we are the owners of ADC Refrigeration. We are requesting to rezone parcel 30606106, located on Verde Road in Golden Valley from AR to C2 zone. We've been in business since 2019 and have been blessed to currently have over a thousand customers. Due to the demand, we are seeking to expand by building an office and a shop. We are currently we currently work remotely, and by doing this, we would be able to bring our company as a team and to provide further training to our current staff and to assist our customers. Our interest is to provide a professional environment and service for our customers and staff with the opportunity to create more jobs for our community. <clears throat> I also would like to uh, add that the general plan did adopt to convert this um, parcel into a C2. Um, I believe there's official record um, number 9503922, a Mojave County record, dated on July 31st of 1995. Um, sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs> uh, we hope that we can count on your vote and to support the new improved A to Z refrigeration. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna close the public hearing and ask if any commissioners have any questions. Uh, Commissioner Hubbard. This reads, here it doesn't mention Havasu, Lake Havasu. I'm sorry? This uh, 
up here, you're going to be in Lake Havasu next to the golf course. Is that what it said? You're, you're trying to get these two pieces of paper don't match. We're on item number four. All right, well, number four up here is the Lake Havasu area. Mine doesn't have, oh. We cover services all through Mojave County, including Lake Havasu, for commercial and residential HVAC. Something's messed up. This is okay. Ma Madam Chair. <clears throat> yes. Uh, Commissioner Brett, or Hubbard, where, where are you reading that? Because our agenda and the item mentions that it's right. Golden Valley. This thing might have changed on me. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> but it says Lake Havasu area, area. Open lot storage. So this might, maybe this thing jumped into another in the past or something. I don't know. But it says Lake Havasu City storage manufacturing business in Lake Havasu City on Arnold Palmer. And that's right in the middle of the golf course in Lake Havasu. We'll build one there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this thing changed. Okay, excuse me. I turned it back on and it chipped to another. I would exit out of that. Yeah, okay. Got it. Sorry, I'm not, in, I'm not interjecting. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> Any other questions? That's it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank I'm going to call for a motion. Make a motion to approve item four per staff recommendations. Second. Okay, Sorry. we have a motion by Commissioner Hassett, seconded by Commissioner Morse. All in favor say aye. Madam aye. Chair. Aye. Madam Chair. Opposed? Did we close the public hearing? Yes. You did? Yes, yes I did. Okay. Um, motion carries. We're moving to item number five. And staff report is by Peggy Clements. Item number five is an evaluation of a request for a rezone of assessor's parcel number 3061214 from an AR 2A agriculture residential two acre minimum lot size zone to an AR agriculture residential zone to allow for a minor land division in the Golden Valley vicinity. Staff recommends approval per development standard. Thank you. I'm going to open the public hearing. Is the applicant present and do you wish to speak? Name and address, please. Jeremy Brown, 6214 South Vineyard Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to add value to this property with a rezone from AR2 to AR. Um, I want to thank the staff for their time and assistance in my due diligence process for this, and I'm here to, to answer any questions uh, or concerns with this rezone, and again, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Do we have any questions of this applicant? Thank you, sir. I'm going to close the public hearing and ask for a motion. I'll move that we approve item number, what are we on? Five. Five? Five. With staff recommendations. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Bradshaw, seconded by Commissioner Hassett. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Item number six, staff report by Alex Bolin. Item number six is an evaluation of a request for a rezone of assessor's parcel number 3064600H from an AR-10A agricultural residential 10-acre minimum lot size zone to an AR agricultural residential zone to allow for a minor land division in the Golden Valley vicinity. Staff recommends approval with standard conditions. Thank you. I'm going to open the public hearing and ask if the applicant is present and do you wish to speak? Jeremy Brown, 6214 South Vineyard Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, same thing again. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. I'm going to close the public hearing and ask if any of the commissioners have any questions. Hearing none, I will ask for a motion. Make a motion to approve item six per staff recommendations. Second. I have a, a motion by Commissioner Hassett, seconded by Commissioner Petrillo. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Item number seven, staff report by Amy Patsy. 
Item number seven is an evaluation of a request for a rezone of assessor's parcel number 339-34010 from an AR-36A agricultural residential 36-acre minimum lot size zone to a CRE-36A commercial recreation 36-acre minimum lot size zone to allow for cabin rentals in the Golden Valley vicinity. Staff has received two letters of opposition to date. Staff is recommending approval of this request with standard conditions. Thank you. I'm going to open the public hearing. Is the applicant present and do you wish to speak? Mr. Martinez. Mrs. Martinez. <laughs> Sorry. Good afternoon. I'm very nervous. Um, that right there is Golden Valley. My name is Antoinette Martinez. Kingman, Arizona. Um, originally, what we wanted was tiny homes, affordable, real affordable homes, like two bedroom, one bath type things. They would have been self-sufficient in terms of uh, having their own uh, uh, septic tank, having their uh, propane tanks, having, you know, being self-sufficient. A real type of thing that where um, seniors, uh, uh, smaller families, kids starting out, stuff like that. That's what we originally wanted. We got denied. Um, I think it's better than the Angle Homes because it's more self-sufficient. They'd be hauling in their own water and stuff like that, just like these caps. I don't mind doing what they're recommending because either way, you know, we can benefit. The thing is, is that renters don't take care of their homes like owners do. Owners take care of their homes, they take care of their neighbors, you know, the environment and so forth. Um, I just wanted um, uh, to let you guys know that I, I we would have really uh, preferred the tiny homes as opposed to these rental cabins where it's rented, it's not, people come and go and, you know, they don't care. The people who rent these tiny homes who can afford it um uh veterans you know that can afford who just want a place you know and that's what we wanted initially to change it to these cabins you know that we're willing to take but didn't want it uh you know it would benefit it would so benefit more the the community if we had the tiny homes and not so much uh because i know that um we get people going on our land, you know, they come and they, you know, they mess it up and stuff and they're on their ATVs and stuff. We have no control over that because we're not there yet. Uh, I know that that was one of the uh, reasons that they didn't want, uh, that they're opposing the cabins as well. So I'm gonna catch 22 right here and I would really prefer the tiny homes affordable they wouldn't they would not be anywhere near the what the angle homes are doing you know it would be a little bit more um, self-contained self-sufficient uh i i know the water's an issue and i learned so much from being here and i really want to thank everybody for that um but uh i know there's opposition and i would like to hear a little bit more of their opposition as well thank you very much thank you <laughs> I'm going to close the public hearing and ask if the commissioners have any questions. I do. Commissioner Bradshaw. So how many, how many of these cabins do you plan to have on the, on the at property? This, at this point, because we, we kind of changed it. I'm not sure. Originally, we wanted at least um, as many tiny homes as we can get on the lot, uh, but uh, with um, a six-acre per uh, I guess we're going to do the same with the cabins. I was hoping later on that we, you know, we're go we're going to build the cabins like the tiny homes, so that maybe later we can subdivide them and people can actually purchase. So that's an option. But we're, we're still in our our planning stages. That's why we're here uh, to see what kind of reactions we get, you know, from our neighbors and so forth. But um, it, it was more more, more geared towards, uh, uh, like we said initially, real affordable housing. 
the one or two bedrooms where, you know, like me, you know, my kids are grown and gone. I don't need a big house. I don't need an angle home. I just need a, a, a piece of land. I appreciate that. So my, so my concern is, so you're, you're, so are you planning on this being a nightly rental type situation? That's what I'm told that I can do. Okay. Um, and, but there's no water. What water resources do you have? The water sources, which I'm learning, mm -hmm. uh, we would have had them had each home truck in their own, like they do where they're far off up in the hills or whatever. They would have to do their own water source. Sixth acre doesn't, doesn't allow for a septic, so what do you do for a septic? <clears throat> I didn't know that, and I, thank you. I, I didn't know that, but I was looking for recommendations. So you have to have at least one acre for a septic um, approval. And we'll, we'll do that too. Unless you're doing a combined septic system, which I'm, I won't get to there. But. Uh, yeah, I, I, I wasn't sure about that. I know that I was told that we could do that or that, no, that it was an option. It was something I don't want to do. I would rather have everybody have their own. And that's kind of what it's going to be when we do the cabins anyway. You we, know, I mean. Question. We are going to make a decision on what you have requested, not what you would like to have. Um, Correct. Right. I just wanted to, to, I just wanted to point out that, you know, uh, that, um, sorry, I know. <clears throat> that um, did you, you have a question in an HOA I'm sorry are you in an HOA yes we are does your HOA allow for what you're requesting they haven't said anything one way or another we gave them the same thing that we gave you and kind of like we're still waiting I think they're waiting to see what you guys say that's just my thought. I don't know for sure. I just know that I had to have somebody's approval first. Okay, thank you very much. You had a Madam Chair, Commissioners, just to clarify, so the, what's before you today is a rezone to a CRE, which is our commercial recreation um, zoning, um, to allow for cabin rentals, which is essentially almost the same as like a, like a hotel, um, that we would require a site plan to be done the site plan would need to include how they plan on providing water that's approved by our Arizona Department of Water Quality um, or Environmental Quality, as well as uh, a septic system or wastewater treatment system that could facilitate every cabin on site. That is not proposed to subdivide this parcel. I think what we're putting on there is a 36 acre minimum lot size, yeah. the same as what it currently has. So. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm, I have closed the uh, public hearing already, so I'm going to call for a motion. Just anybody? Make a motion to approve item eight. Second. My mic was off. Seven. Um, okay, I have a, a motion by Commissioner Hassett, seconded by Commissioner Hillman. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Aye. Um, okay, I counted two uh, nays, so it does pass. Item number nine, staff report by Peggy Clements. Item number nine is an evaluation of a request for a rezone of assessor's parcel number 3280628528. From an AR agricultural residential zone to a CRE commercial recreation zone for a campground in Dolan Springs vicinity. Four letters of opposition have been received. Staff recommends approval per st standard conditions. Thank you. I'm going to open the public hearing. And I do have some people who would like to speak on this. What I'm going to ask is the applicant is present and do you wish to speak? Do you wish to speak or just be there for questions? Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, 
We're here today um, at the request of county staff um, so that we can continue to rent out our dome structure um, that we, uh, we'd like to rent out when not being used for personal use. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, prior to our taking over the land, um, it, was, it was a blight in the neighborhood. There were cars, parts everywhere, construction debris, and uh, um, a dumping ground, basically. <coughs> uh, we cleaned it up and built the deck of the dome. Um, with our own two hands, uh, we focused on building in a very respectful way to the uh, to the ground, um, preventing or preserving all the ground cover, and primarily building on uh, areas that were already cleared and using the existing driveway through the property. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we later added a toilet and shower structure, um, and we're working with county staff to make sure that that will uh, meet regulations. Now, um, we met a lot of really great people in Dover Springs, and uh, they've been very welcoming and very helpful. And uh, to be honest, we made a mistake. We relied on some of the information from those very kind people. We now know that not all the information was accurate. Um, we have uh, never done anything like this before. So uh, it's been a very educational journey for us. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we wanted to make sure things are built well. So we've used uh, all high quality materials and, uh, and are wanting to do it right. Um, we do know that there were um, four letters of uh, concern. Um, I personally emailed each one of those individuals. Um, I invited them to call me. None of them have. I did uh, have an email from one of them that thanked me for the information and uh, said that their biggest concern now was um, what happens if we leave? You know, what happens to the land? So um, primarily their concerns were um, fire concern, but there is no open wood-burning fire pit. There's no charcoal pit, anything like that. Um, road usage was another one. Um, this has less road usage than a normal single family residence would, and then also big development. Um, we're not looking to do any kind of high density commercial development. We're not developers. Um, we, uh, we like the tranquility um, that this area has, and uh, it's kind of nice to actually wake up and have a cow roaming across the deck um, in that area. So um, we also promote local businesses and uh, have gotten to be friends with some of the uh, cafe owners and such there, and have just really enjoyed ourselves out there. Um, and I think for the record, I didn't say, my name is Scott Emerson. Uh, I live at 3445 Jade Flower Street in uh, Las Vegas, but I grew up in rural Missouri. So this is very much in line with, uh, with what, I, uh, what I experienced there. So, um, so that's all. Thank you very much for your consideration, and I'll take any questions or however this works. Um, thank you. I will call you back if we need questions. Well, I have a question. You have a question? Okay. Um, you said you're here at the request of staff. Were you flagged for some reason? Yeah, we were we were renting this out because we understood from some of the, the neighbors, not neighbors, but some of the folks in there in the community that we didn't need to have a permit or anything like that to do like a, a Airbnb when we weren't using it. Um, that's the part of information that was incorrect. Um, we did get a violation notice. So somebody called county um, and made a, a violation uh, complaint. And so we we thought this to be so important. We actually drove down twice from Las Vegas to meet with county staff in person um, because we know how important relationships are. So, so how many- We're no longer renting it out until we get this resolved, so. How many sites do you have for rent? We just have the one dome. Okay. Yeah. It's a, it's a dome built on a, a large deck. So. And how often were you renting it out? Uh, I think since- since January of last year, I think we looked it up. I think we had 43 night stays, um, and that was about it. So, because we stay there quite a bit ourselves. Okay, so is it, are you prohibited from doing any kind of rental on the property? I'm not clear sure. on that. That's according to county staff, yes. That's why we're asking for the zoning change, because this zoning change would allow us to do that and continue that practice. And in those 43 states, we've had confused. no issues with anybody. And, um, guests have been absolutely great. And we promote local businesses to them. And I know they've gone to. Is there an HOA? No, not that I know of. Met, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner Martin, just to, to clarify, is if, if the property was developed with a single family residence, which what the, the zoning currently would allow for, then no, we don't have any requirements for renting out your house. They can do it through Airbnb. Uh, as a single family residence, the, the structure on the property is not considered a single family residence. Um, it would be considered a campground if some, like somebody's camping in 
all of the building code requirements that are required for a single family residence. So therefore it would have to be essentially a campground is what we're calling it. So what is that dome structure? It's actually got metal girders to it, then it has a membrane fabric over it. Uh, how many square feet is that? Uh, it's about 20 feet in diameter, whatever okay. that works out to be. So. Okay, thank you, sir. Huh? I have some people who would like to speak. So I'm, I'm going to do the same thing I did before and line you up. Um, Linda, it looks like B-U-D-E, Bude, and Gary Mercer and Michelle Baker. In that order, please come to the podium. <clears throat> State your name and address, please. Linda Buda, B U D A, 16740 North Mount Loco Drive. I live directly across from the dome. And um, you were inquiring. This is what the structure actually looks like from my yard. Let's see if I can get it right. There you go. Okay. And while I'm at it real quick, I know I got a time limit. These are the other things I can view from my yard that are allowed. These meet all zoning regulations. None of these are occupied. None of these are occupiable. Um, that, because is I'm that all to, on that property? No, these are other properties around me. Oh, okay. Just comparing to their property. Um, because I'm trying to keep it short, I wrote notes. Uh, we known John and Scott about a year or so now. Admittedly, we too had questions and misgivings at first. We found the best way to find answers was to actually talk to them directly, which we did, and which is how we became friends. They've worked hard to remove nearly three decades of old construction waste and decaying vehicles, also for which we're thankful. The property, I think, is much improved from what it was, no doubt. They've worked hard to maintain much of the original natural beauty of the nature around us. They keep the place pristine and well-maintained. Um, again, these other properties that I quickly showed uh, in no way compare to the pristine with their disrepair and decay. How you guys do allow this befuddles me. Um, all I can say is they've proven to be very conscientious neighbors, and I only wish to have them maintain the structure as they are. They've done nothing that upsets us, so I think Thank you should you. consider them. Thank you. And we don't allow anything. We don't have anything to do with the, the abandoned <laughs> things on those property. Gary, Mer no, you're not Gary. Not you Gary. are Michelle. Yes. Michelle, uh, I live in Stallion Drive in Dolan Springs. Um, I'm opposed to commercial zoning in particular. I, I think it needs to stay residential. Uh, you know, if he was going to be able to do an Airbnb thing, that would be fine. But we just don't feel we want commercial zoning inside residential area having random people because we have problems with people who come out here in the area and totally disrespect the area. I'm not saying I, what they've done to the property is beautiful and gorgeous, but if he could do Airbnb it would be better. We just don't want commercial zoning. We want to keep it residential. And that's my opposition. Okay, thank you very much. Gary Merced and Vincent Scala and Teresa Couch. No, I'm butchering these names. You are number two. Okay, come on up, Vincent. I guess I came today to discuss this thing. Name that we and, were, and address, please. You would think that the neighbors would have been um, involved in what their plan is, but we weren't involved. Sir, I, I need your name and your address. Sorry. Vincent Scala, 16692 North Nolan Road. Thank you. Okay. And so I'm opposed to a commercial area in our residential area, our neighborhood. We're in a canyon system. 
where there's one road in and the same road out. What they're proposing is a campground. And they, if they get this change to a commercial, there are multiple uses for a commercial um, project. They may have intention to do this now, but if they sell or if they change their mind, they can be putting up multi family dwellings there and whatever the commercial zoning would permit. Now, the problem I have is that uh, we've been living there for 15 years as most of the neighbors there. They're just now coming in. They don't even live there. They're in Las Vegas. So they've bought a piece of property which they thought they can do something with rather than checking with zoning and maybe legal, um, a lawyer or realtors to what that property can be used for. They went and put up a structure which is non-conforming. And then they said, oh no, now we can't do what we want to do, so we better uh, try and get the zoning changed. Well, they, they're planning to totally upset the neighborhood. We have no fire exit. If there is a fire, because it's a campground, it happens at that location, that it's at the very entrance into our subdivision, fire trucks can't get past it. We're, we're stuck. We're stranded. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Parisa? Is your last name Couch? Thank you. Parisa Couch, I live at 16660 North Street. I'm about a quarter mile from the dome. I only oppose the commercial zoning because we're a residential area and it's a small residential area off the main road. And that's what I moved there for was the quiet and just the peace we get out there. And I'm hoping you don't go for this. That's Thank you. Uh, Dave, uh, I, I cannot read it. Uh, and Maria Burns, R. Burns, and De Denise, or Dennis. Yes. Name and address, please, sir. Dave Nicely, Dolan Springs, Arizona. <clears throat> I'm just going to read this. I used to live a few streets up from the proposed campground and still have a vested interest in our valley and have a responsibility to not only myself but my friends and neighbors to speak on this proposed campground. Myself and others don't feel the county has addressed some very important issues that we as homeowners have had to deal with for several years. Most importantly, it is our water situation. Our water wells have been in decline for over 10 years. Some are now producing less than a gallon a minute, and people are having to consider drilling new wells. There are still many lots in our valley zone, residential and agriculture, um, that would be developed, residential agriculture. Another big issue is our <coughs> access. 14th Street is a 30-foot wide road that is supposed to be maintained by the county. If you want to call running a road grader over it four times a year with no water. Maintained 98% <coughs> maintained of the year, it is a washboard nightmare. We already deal with increased vehicle traffic due to three trailheads on our access road one of which is at the east end of our small valley, which means they have to drive the full length of the valley to get there, which is probably a little over a mile long. There's also an extreme fire hazard because there is no uh, only one accessible road in and out. Uh, bottom line is that uh, this is not a place for a campground. And uh, one more thing, the, this project is owned by a land development company, and they are going to develop it to its maximum potential. That is what they are in business to do. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Commissioner Hassett has a question for staff. Uh, just for clarification purposes, you said that you're requiring this zoning for campground based on the dwelling is because the dome is not considered single family residential? Madam Chair, Commissioner Hassett, that's correct. The structure that's currently there does not meet the building code for a single family residence. Okay, so because it doesn't meet the building code, that's what 
prohibits him from doing Airbnb or, or whatever. So could there be, because their concern is campground and commercial. So could this be approved with the caveat that it is only one dwelling on property for this? Um, Madam Chair, Commissioner Hassett, I, so if you, if the rezone goes through, you can limit it to how many um, spaces would be allowed in the campground. And so if you said, well, I mean, it sounds like this gentleman, his family, they use it for themselves. They also rent it out, which should be Airbnb, but just because of the way the dome was built, it's not single family residential. So all we're trying to do is allow him to rent it out and use it. We're not trying to allow for a friendly pines or something along those lines. So we could technically alleviate everyone's concerns of this being a commercial campground by restricting it to the dome. Madam Chair, Commissioner Hassett, Hassett, that's correct. We've done similar conditions on RV parks where they've only allowed two RV spaces. This would be the same thing where it's a campground. Oh, you, can, you would limit it to only a campground for one because there are other uses in the CRE zone that they could use it for, like a hotel, a uh, golf course, which you can fit on that parcel. But anyways. Maybe uh, mini golf. <laughs> mini golf. Uh, but... Um, the, if you limited it to uh, a campground only with one one uh, camping site, that is something the commission could put in the conditions. You you mind me asking the people who are wanting to speak if that would alleviate their concerns? No. Fire. But we're going to trap. There is a fire. Okay. So Okay, so what happens if there's a fire at the entrance of the road when we don't rezone this, but he's in from Vegas? Actually, I don't think I can do this. I'm sorry. My bad. Continue. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're kidding yourself. Well, I just want a clarification yeah. on commercial. Okay. Marie, Maria. Thank you for hearing our comments and our concerns for our neighborhood. We bought our place in 87, I believe, and we bought it for one thing specific. We like the area. We like it the way it is. It's changed a lot. And yes, that area what had things over there. There were vehicles that were stored from the owner. But what we question is, if this was to be residential in the beginning, why didn't they occupy it and make a house or something like the rest of us? We invested a lot of money in our home. We went septic tank, electricity, Everything that's required from you guys, all the inspections on our property, the fencing, we have a lot of money invested. Not only do we not want it there, if I wanted to live anywhere near a KOA, I would have bought there. And we are concerned about the fires. We had one about three years ago, and we were in there, and we were terrified. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for hearing me. Dennis? My name is Dennis Bruns, 16820 Mount Local, Dolan Springs, Arizona. My concerns are much like the rest of my residents in the area. We're all there. Most of us are retired. Nice, peaceful little place to live. We're not interested in having a commercial unit coming into the area and opening up for possible other commercial uses. And I would also like to add that the one person pushing this the hardest, Linda Buddha, gets paid for services rendered to that owner. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. I have a Janet Clark, a Greg Martin, um, Kimberly, I believe, and David McNeely. So, Janet. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Chairman and Commissioners. Um, I'm Janet Clark. I live at 16645 Ocotillo in an adjoining lot, 16644 Oak Drive, two entrances. Um, I would like to oppose the commercial use of property in our neighborhood. I've been there 20 years. I was, I think, the second stick-built house in, in our neighborhood. Um, 
I have a lot of concerns with a commercial uh, zoning, uh, especially when the zoning notice was taken down within two weeks. Uh, it originally said uh, RV campground. Uh, either way, we back up to wilderness. We did have a fire uh, the first year I lived there. Our local fire department did not show up. It's common knowledge that if there is a fire, if they don't have a propane tank, the place burns down. This dome house is a tent with a metal frame. It is not a house. Uh, it's a polyethylene or polyvinyl uh, tent. Um, there is a problem with water. I have my own well. I've had a decrease in water. Uh, my biggest concern is campground says campfires. The prevailing wind is from the west. Uh, this is at the entrance of the neighborhood. So if there is a fire, especially in the summer, it's going to take it to my house, which I'm the last buildable lot up on the mountain. Uh, it's also agricultural. We'd like to keep it agricultural. Thank you, Thank you. Greg Martin. <coughs> Howdy. Uh, my name is Greg Martin. I live at 166290 Mount Loco. I'm probably one of the closer neighbors to this lot. And in the beginning, I had kind of a mixed reaction. And I sat on the fence for a while and kind of thought about it. But now I have some concerns. Uh, one is that this lot, I'm not sure how big it is, uh, is surrounded by residents. I mean, right across the street, right next to it. Uh, behind it, I'm one lot away from the place. And some of my concerns would be uh, privacy. Uh, we're a neighborhood of people who mind their own business. Uh, it's grown over the years, like I'm sure everywhere has. Uh, my other concern would be a health concern. This lot is right next to a, not a busy road, just another road out there in the desert. But this road, among others, kick up so much dust when somebody drives by. And to be camping just yards away from this road might create a health problem. My other issue is a, a fire danger. Uh, we all pretty much keep to our own. Some people got burn barrels. Some people got, uh, you know, big fireplaces, what have you. Uh, if these guys are going to have campfires, uh, I believe that might be a hazard, especially to the surrounding neighbors. You know, oh, am I done? Yes, you are. Okay. Thank you very much. Good luck. <laughs> and I assume you are David? Kim was here earlier, but she had a health issue and had okay. to uh, leave, and unfortunately. I her away. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and Commissioners. I'm going to really try to be very brief because I know I have a two-minute warning here. Uh, my name is uh, Captain David McNeilis, retired, uh, 16708 North Needle Drive. I am a certified maritime firefighter in addition to my shipboard duties as well as a paramedic. So uh, I've got quite a bit of concerns. I'm going to be very, very brief. I've got to take off my glasses so I can see. A couple of the things that I would like to clarify for the commission, uh, there is a little bit of a bait and switch here going. It is indeed a tent. And once it is rezoned from uh, commercial versus residential, then the Pandora's box is open. And I really truly don't believe uh, it is going to remain just a one uh, uh, unit, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it says RV. It will most likely be turned into an RV park. This is a very, very unique area. I would beg everyone to take a 
look at where it is on the map after this meeting and then you can really see it's backing up against a national wildlife refuge there is indeed only one way in and one way out a couple years ago a truck got stuck in a wash there's a couple good ones going up in there and the whole place was shut down for a period of hours and i could just imagine as a firefighter what a nightmare that would be i mean an absolute nightmare also as some of the i'm not going to repeat what some of the other residents have said uh the bottom line is um it, it's commercial versus residential. This is a residential uh, neighborhood with maybe about 40 or so lots. That's it. And it's two over two miles from the main road. And this is a very small uh, bifurcated road going up into there. So I could just imagine an RV trying to negotiate that. It's just a nightmare waiting to happen, uh, among other things. Uh, no, no proper planning has been done. The only thing that uh, this project, if it were... Uh, approved as commercial would benefit would be the um, out of town LLC that has applied for the permit. Thank you, sir. Detrimental for the residents. Thank, Thank you. you. Do we ha do we still have a Gary Merced? Did he leave? Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to close the public hearing. Um, and I'd like to ask staff, with this new um, zoning, could they put our, an RV park in there? Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners, yes, the CRE zone does allow for an RV park as well. It would. Okay, thank you. Um, did any of the commissioners have any questions? I have a question of staff. So Commissioner it is the... Uh, Rugi. <laughs> The, it's the fact that it's a non-conforming structure that makes this not legal for them to rent out. If it were a, a conforming structure, the right construction, it would be able to be rented out, correct? Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner Ruge, that's correct. If they build a single family residence, which is allowed use on site or a manufactured home, um, there is, there's even a provision in the AR zone you can uh, apply for a uh, RV temporary RV permit. We don't regulate who is living in there as far as renting it or not, uh, just the, the use itself. So the current allowed uses is a single family residence um, or a temporary RV. They applied for that permit right now. Chairman Gillette. Yes. Uh, just to clarify the RV park question, the property is under two acres, so it actually would not meet our requirements for an RV park. The zoning designation would allow for it, but the property wouldn't be able to be approved as an RV park. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, and just to clarify, we can make stipulations to say this is the only yes. only thing. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. I was trying to put that in. Oh, can I say something? I'm going to close the public hearing. <coughs> and Commissioner Martin? Um, if we allow this, we're setting precedence for people putting up a tent on their property and following suit. Well, I, I, from what I understand, this this tent has been there for quite some time. I think we can limit well, this is with our like motion. Do it and then come and beg for mercy rather than conforming to the current code. Oh, you brought up a good point, Joe. Did you? The, the owners bought the property with the tent currently on. They did not build the tent there, correct? That's irrelevant. Zoning and code is zoning and code. We shouldn't have to be accommodating people that don't know what they're doing or what they're buying. I think we could limit it by putting in the motion only one dwelling. We're setting precedents for people to follow suit. I would agree with that. The public hearing is closed. You're not allowed to talk. Um, okay, I'm going to entertain a motion. Make a motion to deny. Second. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Ruby. A second by Commissioner Hubbard. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. The 
this, um, this item has been denied. Item number 10, report by Amy Patsy. Item number 10 is an evaluation of a request for an amendment to the Mojave County General Plan from a suburban residential land use designation to a general commercial land use designation and a rezone of assessor's parcel number 32804118 from an AR agricultural residential zone to a C2H Excuse highway. Excuse me, Amy. Those exiting, please be quiet. Thank you. Go ahead to a C2H highway commercial zone to build a tire and tailor shop in the Dolan Springs vicinity. Oh, does not listen. Staff is rec recommending denial of this request as it is considered spot zoning and does not align with the current general plan for the area. Thank you. I'm gonna open the public hearing and ask if the applicant is present. I have no requests for anybody to speak on this. Okay. I'm going to close the public hearing and ask um, for a motion. I move to deny for staff recommendations. Second. Second. Okay, I have a motion by um, Commissioner Patillo, seconded by Commissioner Hassett. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved, the, motion, the item is denied. Item number 11, Alex Bolin. Item number 11 is an evaluation of a request for an extension of time for a rezone for assessor's parcel number 20901148 to allow for the completion of the conditions of BOS resolution 2022-026, which approved an ES solar energy overlay zone to allow for a solar energy project in the Griffith vicinity. Staff recommends approval with the new expiration date of March 31st 2026. I would also like to note to the Commission that item 11 and item 12 today were originally approved under the same resolution in 2022. There are two property owners now that wish to move forward separately, so items 11 and 12 are similar requests but are being heard as separate items with separate parcels. Thank you. I'm going to open the public hearing and ask if the applicant is present and do you wish to speak? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairman, Commissioners. My name is Andrew Yancey. I'm an attorney with Bergen, Frick, Smalley, and Oberholster. We are at 4343 East Camelback Road in Phoenix. Pleased to be here before you today representing Long Road Development. They're a national solar developer who has uh, projects on the ground that are both operational and under construction in Arizona. Um, we're here before you today, as staff just mentioned, seeking a time extension for an energy overlay. It's for about 570 acres. It's all privately owned land with underlying MX zoning. Uh, the case was initially brought back in 2022. It went through the full process. It was unanimously approved by the Board of Supervisors at that time. Uh, we started working with Unisource, the, the utility in 2022 on interconnection studies. That's the, the first step to being able to move forward with this type of project. Um, we're hoping that that will wrap up soon. It, it's still ongoing and that we'll be able to move forward with the project. Uh, our request today will allow us the time to keep working with Unisource to that end. Um, Madam Chairman, I do have a, a full slide presentation. If you'd like me to present that, I'm also happy to just answer any questions you may have. Uh, due to the time elements, I would prefer not to see the um, presentation. Um, I do have some people who want to speak on this, so if you will stay around so that we can ask you questions later. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I'm just curious what your reason for your extension was. Was it solely on the interconnecting agreements with Unisource, or was it predicated on selling the properties or splitting them off? Uh, Commissioner Hassett, it is just based on working through the interconnection studies with uh, Unisource. Uh, Long Road's model is to, to own and operate the project afterwards so that intend to stick with it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a Pamela Bowden, 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 <coughs> uh, Liz Randolph, and another Liz Randolph. You was going to make sure she talked today. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. It's this one, is it? This one. 
Name and address, please, ma'am. Good afternoon. I'm Pamela Bodden, and I reside at 6457 Empress Trail in Golden Valley. Um, I actually own several properties in Golden Valley. We have wintered down here for five years before we bought our home in May that resides two sides on this solar field. And I realize that I may be a small voice, but if it, you were going to be looking at solar fields on two sides of your properties that was not disclosed in May, it's very heartbreaking. It really is. The first time we noticed that we were notified of this was a notice stuck on a stake outside our property a couple of weeks ago. And it, it has since blown away how many other small residents in that area have not seen that notice. Now, I realize that we have to make certain adjustments for progress and the utilities. I mean, we use utilities ourselves. But this is, there were extenuating circumstances of why we bought our property. We love Golden Valley. Some of them are health issues that we moved down here because we were unable to be up north and continue to live up there. And two, we had an adult son that was in a car accident a year and a half ago. He has some mobility issues as well as a traumatic brain injury. So we had to begin looking for affordable options down in Golden Valley to accommodate his special needs. We found this place. It should have been disclosed with the um, real estate, although I understand that's not the solar company's problem. What I have a problem with is the view, the, the dust, the everything that I could. I'm, I'm going to be looking at it as close as I am to you across my road on two sides for this solar field. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Is Liz Randolph still here? Apparently not. Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing. Do you, any of the commissioners have any questions? So obviously I'm new. This was approved in 2022? Yes. Unanimously? Yes. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Bradshaw? Thank you, Madam Chair. So, um, so this is in the MX zone, and we are going to hear, uh, I believe it's item 17, about a, a proposal to revise the, the ordinance, which this falls, for the most part, falls within those, that new ordinance statute. Um, I think there's, I, there is some concern about residential um, bufferings and things of that nature. We don't have the prerogative to make that change. With, with an extension of time, but that's probably the only stipulation that I see between where this is situated today as opposed to if it were to come in in, half, in six months. Any other questions? Hearing none, I will ask for a motion. I move that we approve this um, item and move it forward to the Board of Supervisors with as an extension of time. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Bradshaw, seconded by Commissioner Pertillo. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Item number 12, staff report, Alex Boland. Item 12 is an evaluation of a request for an extension of time for a rezone for assessor's parcel numbers 2090119. 122139 and 140 to allow for the completion of conditions of BOS resolution 2022-026 which approved an ES solar energy overlay zone to allow for a solar energy project in the Griffith vicinity. Staff recommends approval with a new expiration date of March 31st, 2026. Thank you. I'm going to open the public hearing and ask if the applicant is present and do you wish to speak? 
Chairperson Gillette, uh, members of the commission. My name is Ben Graff with the law firm of Quarles and Brady. We are at 2 North Central Avenue in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, with me today is the uh, property owner, which is AZ Havasu Golden Valley LLC. Uh, again, very similar to the case that you just saw. We are the second component of the original February 7th, 2022 approval, uh, asking for an identical uh, two-year extension. Uh, the uh, I will also forego my formal presentation if it's the chair's prerogative. The only uh, additional item I would just add specific to our site uh, is that if I were in your shoes, I'd be looking at what has been accomplished by the applicant in the interim. Have they been sitting on their hands or have they been moving forward diligently? Um, and uh, my client has been moving forward incredibly diligently. In fact, uh, we're not only past most of the uh, initial studies and the interconnectivity uh, discussions with Unisource, um, but we are actively submitting and receiving comments on our site plan with staff. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank staff uh, to my right for all the coordination on this site. So we have a site plan going through the process. We've had extensive work uh, and time put into this. Uh, so we are well on our way, but as is typical with most of these cases, it takes more than two years. Uh, and this is an opportunity for the county to have us check in with you, make sure we're doing the right thing and ask for the extension. So with that, um, unless there are questions, I'll forego on my formal presentation. Do have any questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm gonna close the public hearing and ask for a vote. Make a motion to approve item 12 per staff recommendation. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Hassett Seconded by Commissioner Morris. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Item number 13, staff report by Amy Atzi. Item number 13 is an evaluation of a request for a rezone of assessor's parcel number 34413045D from an AR14A agricultural residential 14 acre minimum lot size zone to an AR7A, Agricultural Residential 7-Acre Minimum Lot Size Zone, to allow for a minor land division in the Kingman vicinity. Staff is recommending approval with standard conditions. Thank you. I'm gonna open the public hearing and ask if the applicant is present and do you wish to speak? My name is Dennis Rowe. The address is 2080-2 East Cali Coppola, which is on that property. My parents initially bought the property some 20 years ago, and their thought was to, when they passed away, to divide it between me and my siblings. Well, the only ones left are me and my sister, so we're just hoping to be able to rezone the property so we can divide it in half and she can have half and I can have half. And that's all we're looking for. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna close the public hearing and ask if the commissioners have any questions. Hearing none, I will ask for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Rugi, uh, seconded by Commissioner Pertillo. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Item number 14 is Amy Patsy. Item number 14 is an evaluation of a request for a rezone of assessor's parcel numbers 20415022 and 023 from an AR36A agricultural residential 36 acre minimum lot size zone to an AR5A agricultural residential 5 acre minimum lot size zone to allow for a minor land division in the Kingman vicinity. Staff is recommending approval with standard conditions. Thank you. I'm going to open the public hearing and ask if the applicant is present and do you wish to speak? Name and address, please, sir. Good afternoon, committee members. My name is Max Kittle, Kingman, Arizona. I am the agent on behalf of the owner. Um, what we are trying to get accomplished here today is a minor land division. There is currently two existing parcels and we are trying to split it into four parcels. Um, each of the parcels will have a, a 25 foot ingress and egress to them. And there is also a 16 foot uh, MEC utility easement as well. 
And after that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. I'm going to close the public hearing and ask if there are any questions from the commissioners. Thank you, sir. Hearing none, I'll ask for a motion. Make a motion to approve item 14 with staff recommendations. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Hellams, seconded by Commissioner Hassett. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Item number 15, Peggy Clements. Item number 15 is an evaluation of a request for a rezone of assessor's parcel number 35305133 from an AR 36A agriculture residential 36 acre minimum lot size zone to an AR 5A agriculture residential 5 acre minimum lot size zone to allow for a minor land division in the King vicinity. Staff recommends approval per sta standard conditions. Thank you, Peggy. Uh, open the public hearing. Is the applicant here and do you wish to speak? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and, and ask for a motion. I would make a motion to approve. I have a motion by Commissioner Rugi, seconded by Commissioner Hellams. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? So moved. Item number 16, staff report by Peggy Clements. Item number 16 is an evaluation of a request for a rezone of assessor's parcel numbers 32411065 and 32411066 from a C2H highway commercial zone to a CMO commercial manufacturing open lot storage zone to allow for an open lot storage facility in the Kingman vicinity. Staff recommends approval per standard conditions. Thank you. Uh, open the public hearing. Is the applicant here and do you wish to speak? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing and ask if the commissioners will give me a motion. Motion to approve item 16 for staff recommendations. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Hassett, seconded by Commissioner Morse. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Item number 17, staff report by Matthew Gunderson. Item number 17 uh, is an evaluation of a request to amend the Mojave County Zoning Ordinance, Section 12.2, Energy Overlay Zone, Section 37A, Special Uses, and Section 37U, Energy Projects to amend the allowed location and requirements for renewable energy projects in Mojave County. So this is, comes from the uh, moratorium that the Board of Supervisors placed on renewable energy projects uh, within the county. Uh, so staff went and looked at the other jurisdictions within Arizona, uh, the other counties, as well as the Bureau of Land Management uh, to see what those requirements were in those other jurisdictions for these types of projects. Um, and then as a re result of that research, uh, this is what uh, staff is currently proposing. Uh, so basically what we would be doing would be getting rid of the energy overlay zone. Currently, um, in order to have a renewable energy project, you can either get this energy overlay zone or you can get a special use permit. Most, uh, because these developments take time, most of the time they go for the energy overlay zone uh, because the special use permit has uh, more strict time guidelines on them. So we'd be removing the energy overlay zone as well as removing the option to get the special use permit in any zone, which is the section 37A. Um, and instead we would be allow the these types of developments by right uh, in our manufacturing zones. So it would be in M2, which is general manufacturing, AD airport development, and MX heavy manufacturing zones. So all of those zoning designations would allow for these types of projects by right uh, without any type of special use permit or anything like that. They would just have to go through the site plan process to ensure that all of the, the other requirements for the development are met. Um, in addition to that, because there are lots of uh, rural areas within Mojave County um, that don't really make sense for a rezone to manufacturing, most of those uh, very rural areas either have the AR or RE zone. 
Uh, so we did provide an option um, to be able to have a uh, solar project with a special use permit in those two zones specifically. Um, however, we, we added additional uh, conditions to that. Um, and, and the biggest one is that they wouldn't be allowed in, within one mile of any existing residence. Uh, and they would have to, uh, the, the process to apply for that special use permit would have to include holding a community meeting that the applicant would have to uh, hold and invite people to, where they would have to notify everyone um, within one mile of the project, as well as in one half mile uh, along the route of any power lines necessary to make interconnection for the project. Um, and they would need to hold that community meeting before they could submit their application um, for the special use permit. In addition, we're, re we're requiring that they provide a preliminary site plan along with that application that could be presented to the commission and the board of supervisors. Um, we did uh, previously in the section 37U for energy projects, um, we had three different types of uh, generation that were listed um, and it, it got confusing and so we, what we did is we we limited it to two um, but after talking to uh, some of the uh, energy providers in the area uh, we decided to change the, the terminology used so this is different than the staff report that we sent out initially uh, the staff report initially said distributed generation and isolated generation but because those are terms that are frequently used within the solar community and our definitions didn't match that. Uh, we were afraid it would get confusing. And so we changed those to offsite use generation and onsite use generation. Uh, so for onsite use generation is, we define that to mean renewable electricity production that is directly interconnected to a utility distribution system intended to be sold and used at a different location. Uh, and then we clarify that liquid hydrogen production is not considered an offsite use generation energy project as part of this section and would only be allowed in the MX or heavy manufacturing zone with a special use permit. And then for on-site use generation uh, would be renewable electricity production that is intended to be used on-site and not directly connected to a utility distribution or transmission system. And that the metering and use <coughs> of on-site use generation by the local energy utility is allowed. And again, clarifying that liquid hydrogen production is not considered part of uh, that allowed use and would only be allowed in the MX zone. So the goal there is we want people to be able to put solar on their houses or uh, we'll have commercial developments that will add solar panels like in their parking lot and use solar as a shade canopy that they use on site. We want people to be able to do that and allow that, continue to allow that um, without any type of special approval. They would just need the, the appropriate permits to be able to do that. So that will continue. And then for, uh, it's for the, the larger solar fields that are intended to be used uh, where the electricity is uh, added to the grid and, and used throughout the county or, or sold elsewhere that they would have to go through these, these other requirements for them. Um, I think that covers uh, most of what I have here. Um, we have the, the rest of the layout there in the staff report for the things that are changing we because the we took some of the items that were initially required as part of the uh, energy overlay zone and added them to section 37u uh, for energy projects to clarify that these these things would still be allowed uh, or required during site plan review uh, staff recommends uh, approval of the proposed ordinance amendment we have also received a, a I believe three letters from uh, different entities that have uh, proposed changes to what we've provided, and I believe those have provided been provided to you for your consideration as well. Thank you very much. I have uh, some people who want to talk on this one, so I have a Jan Martell. Please come up to the podium. Um, George. It looks like H A S one O T I S. Um, is next, and then after him is Matt. Oh my goodness! Happily. By the way, I would like to compliment you in your loud shirts. Um, <laughs> you have been so kind and so attentive and quiet, and I appreciate that. 
Their item is not up yet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. <laughs> Commissioners. Um, I'm John Martell with Mojave Electric. So here on item 17, we see many potential problems or concerns with this one. Uh, it virtually makes building solar impossible for us local utilities who serve current Mojave County residents on any property that doesn't currently hold an energy overlay. The Board of Supervisors in their exemption, they put an exemption in the solar moratorium. This would essentially remove that exemption for any local utilities. Uh, the one mile buffer from every, any resident seems excessive and a hard limit really doesn't consider any sites with other buffering options such as terrain that blocks it or if there's solar already in the area. Um, this could also add a large cost to a project would increase the cost of energy to Mojave residents. Uh, looking at just looking at our service map, there's very few areas that have this manufactured zoning and a limited property that is a mile from any existing residents. So this extra distance will add energy losses to our output, output, which can make the potential of projects unfeasible. The most effective, reliable, and cost-effective renewable energy is located as close to possible to the load. Uh, it also states in here that this action, in effect, will comply with Mojave County General Plan. In the Mojave County General Plan, there's quite a few alternative energy use designations that aren't always in the in the MX zone. So there, I think there could be a conflict there. Uh, section item 4A, where it talks about the what happens with the energy overlay, there's some conf some confusing language in there that says it goes back to whatever the original the original desire or use for the property was. So I think there could use some word change there. But uh, what Mojave Electric would really request is that for you commissioners to table this at this meeting and allow for Unisource and Mojave Electric as any per energy providers in the area to work with county staff to kind of hammer out some of these concerns or issues that could come up in the future. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. George? How do you spell your, I mean, how do you say your last name? Hasiotis. Hasiotis. Thank you. My name is George Hasiotis. I'm at 2701 Andy Divine Avenue in Kingman. I'm a realtor. Um, and I wanted to, uh, add, to some, add to those remarks that were previously given uh, and thank the staff for doing the hard work and doing the survey that uh, very few others have uh, been the pathfinders for in the state and in the nation. Um, there's a lot of attention on, on this particular change and uh, how we deal with the moratorium going forward. Um, I wanted to mention that I'm a member of uh, the Arizona Solar Industries or Solar Energy Industries Association, uh, which is made up of contractors and vendors uh, based in here in Phoenix and throughout the state. Um, another member of that association that I've been speaking with is uh, Fabtech Solar, uh, who deal exclusively with recycling and reuse of solar panels. And I just wanted to present some ideas and some thoughts that might help uh, the staff with uh, the draft and maybe tweaking it. Uh, community benefits is an important component of solar projects. And I think if we looked at that as an overlay and, and came up with a standard, we would be able to better monitor uh, and measure the impact that it has on the county. There's clearly economic impact. Uh, the concern mostly that the staff has been looking at is detrimental effects on health and safety and environment. And I'd like to argue that, uh, you know, there was a reason why the county plan was developed over 10 years ago, and that was the benefits that were received, which in, in recent years have been uh, diminished in, in the public discourse. I don't think we can ignore or underestimate the potential community benefits of a cooperative public and private collaboration. And I think that's what the Mojave Electric Co-op was arguing for. If maybe, should I finish? Uh, no, thank you, sir. Thank you. Matt Capoby. Just have all the tough names today. <laughs> Chairwoman. Uh, uh, please, sir, was... name and address. Yes, ma'am. My name is Matthew Capalbi. I reside at 717 Spring Street here in Kingman, Arizona. As I shared with you earlier, I'm a third generation resident of Arizona, or of Kingman. And uh, 24 years ago, I actually served as the assistant director for the Mojave County Economic Development Authority. Uh, we worked diligently to upgrade the 
uh, energy grid in this area uh, because at the time housing development was booming and we were suffering brownouts in Lake Havasu and Bullhead City. <clears throat> we worked to bring in Griffith uh, Energy. I'm not a big fan of natural gas fired power plants, I agree. Many of the folks here, big water consumer and also a polluter. That's why I support renewable energy projects such as uh, many of the ones that are proposed. And I also, one of the missions of Mesita at the time, Mojave County Economic Development, was to expand the tax base. Right now, Mojave County is facing an $18 million deficit. We need to expand that tax base, bring in clean, renewable energy and, and projects to the county that will pay the property taxes so we can provide the services and the infrastructure and the roads and such needed, again, without abusing our natural resources such as water and, uh, and other uh, resources that we're going to need to manage in the future. So I adamantly support renewable energy projects. I do understand and appreciate the folks behind me uh, regarding natural gas fire power plants, big water consumer, and a polluter. It's not what we need, but we are going to need energy for the future, <clears throat> and we're in a transition phase right now economically. And I think we need to, uh, I agree with the gentleman from, uh, from Mojave Electric Co-op, we should table this and have more deliberative discussions with the, the developers, the community members especially, so they have adequate input, and we come uh, with staff to come to a deliberative agreement that suits everyone involved. So, thank you, thank sir. You. Um, Bruce, no, is that Bruce? Bruce Bouchard? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, what it, that's what it reads like, actually. Yes, ma'am. And we have uh, John Gall, uh, uh, Darren Robinson, and uh, Stephen Eddy. Name and address, sir. Uh, uh, good afternoon. My name is Bruce Bossart. Uh, I live here in Kingman, 3000 North Prescott Street. Uh, I'm a retired Navy nuclear submarine commander and a registered civil engineer in the state. And I, and I uh, specialize in water recharge store aquifer, and I'm very passionate about it. Uh, so over the last 24 years, uh, my major concern has been uh, how we treat our aquifer and, 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 and work on now uh, uh, reducing how uh, our recharging back our aquifer and starts offsetting what we're taking out as we grow. Um, not all solar companies are bad. Some of these companies are willing to make some substantial uh, monetary investments and in infrastructures and recharge. Uh, the figure I have up here is uh, one, one uh, solar company approached me and heard I was so passionate about groundwater recharge into our aquifer and asked me to take a look around where we could possibly do a significant effort and in recharge and back into our Wallapai aquifer. And this is the Archibald Wash, which is basically mile marker 38 on Stockton Hill Road three sections of land where we have a potential recharging <coughs> up to about 8,000 acre feet per year over a 100 square mile uh, watershed basin. Now, this is a considerable cost to the company, but they're willing to come in and invest in our local community and answer a lot of the major, F major issues here that I see across the board is water use. And here's a company who's willing to partner with us. We've discussed it with the staff in Mojave County and came up with some recharge plans. Basically, um, in the Northeast section, we're looking at the possibility of, of a, a significant recharge basin where we use dry wells as recommended by Mojave County Flood Control and, um, and actually recharge up to 8,000 acre feet of water. Any questions? I, I could go in a little bit more detail. Thank you, sir. John Gall. John Gall, 2409 Rica Drive, Kingman, Arizona. I've been working and developing and living in Mojave County since 1996. And I appreciate the work you do. I was a commissioner way back when the 2005 general plan update was done and uh, served as a co-chair of that endeavor. And one point that I'd like to uh, point out on the general plan is the county does not 
put the general plan out to the community to vote on. It's approved by the Board of Supervisors. A municipality like the city has to go through the uh, process of putting it on the ballot. And with that, I'd like to talk about uh, the moratorium and the resulting ordinance that uh, staff has put out here. And I met with uh, Mr. Holtry and Mr. Gunderson last week. I'm a member of the Arizona Solar Energy Association, and they have a detailed letter with comments in your package that they sent, and we discussed that with staff. And staff really did a good job of putting this together. Uh, the only two issues we really have uh, with the uh, proposed zoning ordinance is one, the one mile radius from uh, residential structures in AR zoning or non-MX and commercial zoning. And my argument for that is we own, a group and myself own 560 acres on Route 66 right in front of the Greyhawk Solar Project, which was started in 2017. And I called the Northern Arizona Fire Department to ask if they'd had any problems or concerns since that project was constructed. They've had none. Their only concern is the water availability out there. And I contacted ADEQ and the Mojave County Environmental Services and have not heard of any structural or physical issues with that project. So a barrier more than a quarter mile is a bit excessive in my opinion. And I think that's an ideal project to look at on Route 66. We plan on building several hundred homes there. Uh, we've already talked to our national home builder partner that we work with, and they have no issue with being abutting the solar facility or the substation that's there. And I think it's a choice for buyers to make that decision. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Darren Robinson. Uh, Darren Robinson, 2765 uh, East 92nd Street, Kearney, Nebraska. Hello, Madam Chair and Commissioners. I, I work for a renewable energy company that does solar and wind development. Uh, we'd like to be able to have the opportunity to present projects to you. And what we're finding is, uh, you know, we support a transparent process, but our concern is that if you restrict the setbacks to one mile from a residence, it'll eliminate opportunities that's never going to make it to you. And these are in rural areas that were maybe where a project would make sense. And so we'd like to ask for your consideration of a reduction to a quarter mile. And then if a residence is closer than a quarter mile from the boundaries of the proposed development, then each owner who executes a notarized letter waiver, the project setback requirements would be waived for that residence. So let's say you're going to do a project and you have one individual that's within a, uh, a quarter mile, your whole project is canceled unless you can get their approval of the project. And I think that's what the developer should work out with the landowners. And then um, one additional thing just from my staff is uh, a technical item on the 12 month uh, delay process is that there should be a force majeure added into that process. Um, as we know, there's lots of opportunities for that to occur and projects take quite a while to develop and uh, force majeure should be required or uh, included for uh, uh, more than 12 months to restore operation. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Stephen Eddy. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Stephen Eddy with Unisource 2498 Airways. So uh, I think I'm the last one. Uh, appreciate your time today. Um, I believe it was actually in uh, last June that uh, we presented in front of this board uh, providing a little bit of background in terms of how we plan for our energy needs in the future, uh, as well as providing some information on our all-source RFP process, which includes uh, soliciting new renewable energy projects uh, within our service territory. Uh, I won't belabor some of the points that made that were made earlier, but again, we appreciate the uh, proposal that staff has come up with uh, in lieu of the, or, uh, the, the moratorium. Uh, and would echo the comments from my colleague, John, that we respectfully request a continuance on this item so that we can continue working with staff uh, to identify some of those concerns, particularly the, uh, the distance requirement for, uh, for new projects. So with that, again, appreciate your time. Thank you. I'm going to close the public hearing and um, ask for a motion. I have a question for staff. Okay. Question. Um, so... I've heard a couple of things that this is in lieu of the moratorium. This is in to benefit the residential consumer, but doesn't sound like it solely benefit or could negatively impact the commercial or the industrial type individual on this. How, what was the original setback and why did it evolve to a mile? And 
how much time, if any, was allotted to work with our local energy providers in order to go through this? Uh, Chairman Gillette, Commissioner Hassett. So uh, initially the the setbacks for actual development, like where you could put solar panels, uh, was originally uh, dependent on the zoning designation. So you could, the board had the ability to add in setbacks when they got that energy overlay zone, otherwise it would default to the the normal setbacks of the underlying zone. As for the notification or for the special use permit, the one mile, uh, previously uh, applicants had to notify um, all of the residents within one mile uh, for that neighborhood meeting, that community meeting that they were required to hold. And so that's where we pulled that from. Um, ultimately, the, one of the big uh, reasons that we saw for the board wanting to implement that moratorium was for the uh, the impacts on residents in the nearby area. And so we wanted to, if we're going to put them in on properties that are already residentially zoned, that we wanted to create uh, some type of buffer there. And so that's where that uh, one mile radius came from. So if I own property that is um, MX and I want to put in a solar field, and there's 10 acres to the left of me that's residential and I've owned my property for a really long time and they've continued to creep up with building homes, which is what happens. I'm SOL because the homes are getting close. Like, I guess I'm just confused on where that one mile came from. So, so just to clarify, so the, the one mile uh, buffer from any existing residents is only for the special use permit for properties that are zoned AR or RE. If your property is zoned manufacturing, one of those manufacturing zones where we're allowing it, that one mile buffer would not apply. So if you owned an MX pro zoned property and somebody had a residence, you know, 100 feet from your property line, you would still be able to, to put a solar facility there. Gotcha. Uh, so the, the when you have the man, heavy manufacturing zoning, um, that doesn't apply. The, the idea there is that uh, there's all kinds of uses allowed in those manufacturing zonings that are more intense than a solar field or a, a wind farm. And so, right, uh, the, like a fertilizer are, plant or something. Right. So, and then my second part: how much time, if any, was allotted with local energy providers or commercial establishments prior to putting this out? The only reason I say that is multiple individuals have requested a continuance to either A, work with staff, or B, further review. So, Madam Chair, Mr. Hassett, um, the direction, so when the moratorium went into effect, they came with a working plan. And the working plan described what staff was required to do, which was to uh, research surrounding areas on what they do for solar, um, see if there's any um, any impacts of solar in uh, that any studies that have been done that that show the impacts of solar as well as come up with um, regulations that um, would help facilitate any solar or wind projects in Mojave County and so staff and we had a, a specific timeline for that and that's where we are today where we did our research we came up with our specific plan uh, we did reach out as far as what our proposal is and, and let the energy companies and anybody else um, that was interested know of what we are proposing uh, but we are more than willing to work with them as well this is our first stab at it we just were we're taking what we we found the objectives of the moratorium were were to create um, some type of separation from community and communities and these projects as well as um, uh, making sure that these are located in areas that um, would be more be or more suited for these type of projects, and so that's those are the changes that we've made. But we would be happy to meet with Unisource or with MEC or with some of these solar uh, developers to be able to come up with um, other requirements or um, lesser requirements based on. Um, their input as well. So if, if the commission would like to continue it, that'd be something that we'd be interested in as well to be able to sit down with um, the utility companies and these solar developers to be able to come up with something that would be uh, better for everybody all around. Um, what you see before you today is is based on the direction that we received so far, but the commission can direct us further in meeting with the 
the companies and, and moving forward as well. Or if the commission would like to implement some of the changes that they're recommending right now, that's also an option the commission has. Thank you. Um, I, the main thing we don't want to do is we don't want to lose our ultimate goal that we had when we decided to, when the, the Board of Supervisors decided to look into this moratorium. Um, so it, it, having that in mind, I'm, I'm really happy with what you, uh, the staff has come up with. Madam Chair. Commissioner. Thank, thank you. Um, so I, again, I, 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 I echo the, the sentiments of the others that the work that's gone into this has been extensive and it is, I think it's come a long way. I do have a, some questions and maybe you can help me. Um, so with this new ordinance, I, is, I, I know that before there was kind of a, de a decommissioned plan that was required. Is there a bond, something to where there, there's monies that has to be exchanged in lieu of that decommissioning? Uh, let me pull up the, the wording that we have in there. It, okay. it doesn't necessarily need to be a bond. We do require a decommissioning plan. Uh, they'd be required to provide that uh, with the site plan. So with the decommissioning plan, it needs to include the anticipated life of the project, uh, the estimated decommissioning costs, uh, and then the method of ensuring that the funds will be available for decommissioning and restoration, and then the anticipated manner in which the project will be decommissioned and the site restored. So that method of ensuring that funds will be available, uh, that could be a bond. I think that's a common way of doing it. Uh, some of the ways that we've seen as well is uh, they've had on their engineered cost estimate, they've said, okay, this is, if we recycle these materials, um, and they, they can go that route and basically show that by recycling the materials, they have enough to be able to take it all down and, and restore the site. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. That's very helpful. Um, so do you see the conflicts that were brought up by Mojave Electric um, it be, in this ordinance between some of the other um, areas in Mojave County Ordinance? And would that take some additional revisions to, to bring that into correction? Uh, Chairman, Chairwoman Gillette, Commissioner Bradshaw, um, I, as far as, I'm not sure which ones you're referring to. They, they brought up the general plan. Um, I think that the, the general plan does allow for these types of projects in a, a broad, uh, pretty much anywhere in Mojave County. Um, and uh, I think by doing this, we are trying to, you know, push them towards these manufacturing zones, but also by allowing them with the AR and RE zone, those are those two zoning designations are allowed in, in most places within the county. And so I think we still comply with uh, the, the goals and policies of the general plan by allowing them in uh, these more developed areas as well, as well as still allowing them in the rural areas of the county. Thank you. Madam Chair as well, um, Mr. Bradshaw, uh, I believe with the moratorium, uh, we were we were instructed to look at our zoning ordinances as well as the general plan, um, because it is a, it would be a major amendment to change the general plan. Um, we were we're going to start with the zoning ordinance changes that we can do um, immediately, and then with the general plan update, we were going to have a focus on the energy overlay portion of that. Uh, general plan to make sure that it, it meets the same goals and policies as what we're proposing in the, the zoning ordinance as well. But like like uh, uh, Mr. Gunderson said, uh, we do still feel it fits with what we're what we're proposing. I appreciate that because that was actually my next question about the general plan. So thank you for that clarification. Um, there was a discussion about additional tax bases, and I don't think I've ever seen what what additional tax bases ever ever are presented from a solar project or any kind of an energy project. What, and maybe maybe that's for a different time, but they, there's always this, this discussion about all the extra taxes and benefits to the, to the public, but I've, I haven't seen any actual numbers that say this is what the value is. And, I, and again, I don't, I don't wanna go down into, into the weeds particularly. Um, but I also, and this is just my personal opinion. I mean, one mile seems excessive um, to from from a residence. I get that there needs to be a substantial buffer, but one mile is a long way away from a house to have a solar field. So that kind of concerns me. Um, 
And, and I agree that it, it does stifle these projects substantially. Um, and then, agree, I, I think there should be an option to where, you know, this, a, an energy company could come and get an agreement from property owners to bring that buffer closer. And I, I think that that's something that could be and should be added to the, to the ordinance to where that would, the energy company could negotiate that buffer with the neighbors. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing everything Commissioner Bradshaw is saying and agreeing with him. As I was listening to the testimony today, um, I'm seeing a lot of what at least I think would be unintended consequences. And uh, it would be nice if this could be a win-win for everybody, including the, the uh, utility and project utilities and, and, and the project owners. And perhaps that maybe, maybe we could table it. Um, yeah, I, I recommend it. Commissioner Portello, um, most of you were not here uh, at the time that we took this up, and it was uh, at my instigation, I asked how many of these solar farms mm -hmm. have we approved? So we had staff look that up, and they looked it up, and we had approved 62 of them. And the Board of Supervisors decided that was enough. And that's how we got to where we are today. Um, and if I was the homeowner and they, somebody was building one of these farms, I hate that word, um, a mile away from my house, I would be very happy that they were a mile away. Well, and, and I agree with that, but I think there should be stipulations to where other people could have an option too. So you think, well, I that, don't want to argue with you, but yeah, not, the, the so, point is if somebody agrees to having a, a solar um, farm uh, closer than a mile away from their house, somebody is giving somebody money. Potentially. Yes, that's what's going on. So, um, Chairman Gillette, if I may, just to, to step back a little sure. bit, I appreciate the conversation. I appreciate the input from the um, from the various speakers. Um, just to step back a little bit and look at you know the previous uh, process and, and how these solar farms were were previously approved. Mm -hmm. Um, it was an energy overlay zone, and if they came in and applied for this energy overlay zone, they could they could build this solar farm. And those energy overlay zones, for the most part, were allowed pre pretty yeah. pretty much throughout the county. Um, what what staff has attempted to do, based on the direction received by the board, is to and and recognizing the need for these so you know the solar energy farms and, and the good that they they do provide, um, is to balance that in in looking at what other counties have done and what other jurisdictions have done. Um, what we found was many of them. <clears throat> excuse me, are only allowed in this industrial type zone. And, and wanting to, to bring that in along with what we currently have been doing, that's where you see this, this bridge of the two options. You have the uh, allowed by right with the MX zone. So anywhere where, we, where you have an MX zone, industrial type zone, um, you can have this, this solar, you, you can put these solar farms in by right. Um, wouldn't even, wouldn't need a, a special use permit. In areas, you know, we, we also recognize that throughout the county, there's major power lines, you know, major transmission lines that, that would benefit from these, these solar farms. So in those types, area, types of areas, we allow for this special use permit that, that does bring in this, this, this mile uh, separation from an existing residence. And I, I really appreciate the, the, op, the, um, the option of, of consulting with those property owners that may be within that mile. And, and maybe a mile is not the right number. Maybe it's a half mile, maybe it's a quarter mile. Who, who knows what that right number is? But I, I do like that option of, of being able to, to negotiate with them. And if they say, hey, we're happy with that solar farm right next door, then, then we, we could waive that, that requirement. So I'm happy to, to work on that option as well. But uh, I just wanted to provide that, that background of you know, where we were and, and basically how staff got to this point. And as, as uh, Matthew had mentioned, the mile came from that notification distance that um, previously anybody within a mile received a notification of a, of a future solar farm. So we looked at that and, and that was basically our, our, our benchmark. Now, whether that's the right number or not, we can definitely adjust that as, as the commission and board sees fit. Just Thank you. A mile seems really excessive to me. <laughs> Ma Madam Chair. Yes. Just, just to add to that, um, we, 
I really feel like it's uh, it's just to to get it right on the very first try is not. I don't think that's gonna gonna happen. We're not gonna hit a home run right on our first try of of amending this entire ordinance, which is quite large. And I do believe working with the uh, local utilities and entities are, are are key in this. We just didn't have that direction uh, before. We were directed to uh, simply come up with with the changes and then to present them. But by presenting them now, I believe the commission has that opportunity to be able to say, hey, okay, let's work with um, the utilities. Let's work with the the entities in the in the area and see where we can come up with the best options. So. So if we, t if we table this, though, we're not sending it on to the Board of Supervisors. Right. And right. they're truly the ones who need to make the decision. Yeah. They will always be the ultimate decision makers. What we're doing is if you table the, the item and allow staff to meet with the community, with the um, stakeholders, then uh, and set it for another date and time forward, then we'll come back to the commission after that time with the proposed changes from from meeting with the stakeholders and then after that you pass it on to the board of supervisors so the board of supervisors is always going to have the last say and approval uh we're just uh, the whole point of this commission i believe <coughs> is to be able to work through some of these uh little hiccups before it gets to the board of supervisors in the end and so by allowing us a little bit more time and working with the stakeholders i think that's um I think it would be good in the long run to be able to ultimately present it to the Board of Supervisors with uh, something that, that everybody uh, might be happy with. So. Okay. Madam Chair. Um, so with that, if we were to table this, does this give enough time for staff to, to accommodate this, to get it back to us, and then to the Board of Supervisors prior to the expiration of the moratorium? Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner Bradshaw, absolutely. I think uh, it was 100, how would, 180 days, I believe. We'll have to look at that. I know we're, we still got a lot of time, okay. but even if we just uh, tabled it for one meeting, I think that would allow us the time to meet with the uh, stakeholders before our next meeting and, and come up with changes, um, and we'll still be under that, that time frame. Okay. Um. Commissioner Martin. Over the years, we've had applicants with minimal ba battery storage and applicants with high battery storage. And those I would like to see the one mile buffer. The bad battery storage gets me in some of these plants. Okay. Um, if the board doesn't mind, I'm going to make a motion that we table this until our next meeting. I move that oh, we table we? this to, to the next. I'll second. Go ahead. Can I just sure. make, make a suggestion? Can Thank we continue rather than tabling? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I you're right. Continue this yes. until our next Thank meeting. You. Yes, I, to I would. give the staff an opportunity to talk to. I, I would move that we continue this to the next meeting to give staff an opportunity to visit with uh, exactly. additional stakeholders. Okay. I have a motion. Second. second. Whoever, and a second. It. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Well, that was hard. Mm -hmm. um, we are now on item 18, and I have a sneaking suspicion that all of these brightly colored shirts are here for this reason. <laughs> um, staff report by Matthew Gunderson. <clears throat> uh, item number 18 is an evaluation of a request to amend the Mojave County Zoning Ordinance, uh, Section 34, Regulations for Heavy Manufacturing, or MX Zone to require a special use permit for public and private utility power stations and commercial generating plants, excluding renewable energy projects, and to require a one mile notification radius for the application for the special use permit in Mojave County. Uh, so on March 4th, staff received a petition with over 100 signatures to amend the Mojave County Zoning Ordinance to only allow coal and natural gas power plants with a special use permit in the MX heavy manufacturing zone and to require a one mile notification radius for the special use permit. Uh, staff recommends denial of the proposed amendment uh, to section 34 of the Mojave County Zoning Ordinance uh, due to the inclusion of other uses of similar or greater intensity that are allowed by right within the MX heavy manufacturing zone. 
Thank you. I'm going to open the public hearing and ask if the applicant is present and if you wish to speak. Good afternoon. Name? I'm Mac McKeever. I live at 6090 South Shelby Road in Fort Mojave. Uh, Chairwoman Gillette, members of the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, I'm the one that submitted that petition uh, to change that zoning application. Uh, we recently, and that the reason for our search, we recently got uh, involved in a peaker plant in the Fort Mojave area that uh, the um, utility company is trying to to build that's um, in an area that's basically within a quarter mile of our homes. Um, depends on exactly where you look at. It could be a quarter to a half a mile from, from homes in that area. <coughs> None of us received any kind of notification that they were you know, working on a zoning application or rezoning application. Uh, we knew that that particular parcel had been rezoned to heavy manufacturing in 2018. That zoning uh, had literally expired in 2020 uh, and was supposed to have reverted back to residential. That never happened. Um, could be a lot of reasons why it didn't happen, but it didn't happen. So when the utility company found out about it, they went and reapplied for the heavy manufacturing zoning on that, on that parcel and got it approved. None of us in the residential area knew anything about it because notifications only went out to 300 feet. The uh, article in the newspaper, anybody that saw it thought it was a solar field because it said energy facility. And in speaking with the utility company, they basically refer to any type of power plant as an energy facility, not just a solar or a gas powered natural plant or even a coal fire plant. So anybody that saw it in the paper thought that it was another solar field because there are solar fields all over that property. Uh, none of us travel that, that small country road that is adjacent to the property where the postings, the planning and zoning postings were posted. So none of us knew about it until after it had already been before the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission and been reapproved for the rezoning. So now we're, we're you know, kind of playing catch up on that item. But what this is about is to try to get it, uh, that zoning requirement changed to where notification is out to a mile. So that you know, there, the residents that are within you know, a half a mile of an area like this will be notified without having to uh, just randomly stumble across it at the corner of a property and that's uh that's why we submitted the petition we had about 175 signatures on it we have about 250 people in our group and uh, about 1400 followers that are that are following our action each month and uh and trying to see how we progress with getting some of these things changed so we thank you for your time i thank staff for helping me with that uh they were very supportive in trying to make sure the wording in the uh, the application, the petition that I put forward was correct. And uh, so I thank you and um, open for any questions that anyone might have. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I next have Stephen Eddy. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Again, Stephen Eddy with the Unisaurus. Uh, again, thank you for your time this afternoon. Uh, we concur with staff's recommendation to deny uh, this proposed amendment, notably because of its impact on land that is already zoned MX. Uh, and by singling out a specific use in that zone, um, which arguably is one of the most intense zones in the county. Um, I think it is important to note that, again, you all know this, that this body, uh, the commission, as well as the board, uh, has oversight on land use and zoning decisions in the county. Uh, and so if any entity uh, or individual uh, should propose uh, a use uh, that is not already on land designated as MX, goes through an extensive public participation process to get that land rezoned uh, and get the approval necessary uh, for that use. So uh, again, I'll make it brief, but we do have concerns that this does impact existing land that is already zoned MX. Thank you. Thank you. Jen Maitri? That sound right? John. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> 
Madam Chairman, Commissioners, I'll make this brief as well. Um, so Mojave Electric feels that removing just one of the 18 uses in a zone is discriminatory. Many of the uses permitted under the MX zone have more potential of negative impacts than energy facilities. This appears to MEC to be a devaluation of property, which could make Prop 207 claims arise from this change in the future. If you read the uses a company can build on an MX zone, such as a landfill, a refinery, you can manufacture, assemble, or test aircraft, automotive, and even a spacecraft in this zone. But you can't build a power plant that's powered by, by a jet engine. Uh, so if amended from this proposal, essentially, you can, you can manufacture a jet engine and test it, but you can't, permit, you can't um, generate electricity from that. So um, you'd have to get a special use permit to make it all happen. So just to be clear that Mojave Electric isn't, um, isn't objecting to the notification. I think Max right, the notification makes a lot of sense. We think it could be handled in an ordinance or something else, but to take away a use that's already in a zone, we feel that that's, that, that's where the issue lies and would respectfully request that the commission follow the staff's recommendation, recommendation to deny this use. Thank you. Thank you. Carrie Taylor. Standing in the wings is Mac McKeever and Deborah. McKeever. Oh, that's the same one. I originally had good morning, but it's good afternoon. <laughs> uh, my name's Carrie Taylor. I live at 2611 Alterna Drive, East Alterna Drive. Um, I have been in the Mojave Valley for two years now. We just built our, we hoped to be our forever home. We'll see. I'm in favor of approving the agenda on eight, item 18 as written and as I feel is added requirement for the utility power stations and commercial generation plants require a special use permit and a one mile notification radius helps ensure safety, health, and overall well being of the Mojave County residents while ensuring the stability of their property values for the future. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to skip the McKeevers for the moment, since they are the applicant, and go to Jerry Grinstead and uh, Walter McMath. And after that will be Kelly uh, Refrin. Good afternoon. My name is Jerry Grinstead, Box Elder, South Dakota. My wife and I are former Mojave County residents as of about four days ago. We are in favor of agenda item 18 as written. One of the reasons we recently moved from Fort Mojave is the lack of concern for safety and health of Mojave County residents, along with the lack of transparency that took place on the zoning for that property. A one mile radius that notifies residents will help ensure safety and health for Mojave County residents. We're talking one mile notification for solar. Think about what that sounds like, but a notification for 300 feet for power plants. That's just the only two people here against this. Look who it is. Unisource. MEC. MEC is the one that wanted to build a peaker plant within 1,500 to 2,000 feet from our neighborhood. It's wrong. Please do your job. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McMath. Walter McMath from Fort Mojave. Been here about four years now. I am in favor of approving an agenda, item 18, and a special use permit and a one mile notification with minimum as needed for the residents of Mojave County. Right now, no residents were notified about these plants and it affects us greatly. Our health, our personal peaceful rural living, our property values, and we should never be left out on any project of this magnitude. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly Ref Refrim and Sean Misner. 
Good afternoon, I'm Kelly Revem, 2631 East Alterna Drive. I just want to go on record as being support of item 18 as it is written. Thank you much for your time. Thank you, sir. Sean? Chairman, Commission, Sean Meisner, Candidate District 1 Supervisor. Uh, thank you, Board, for the uh, extension on the distance there. Um, I think this needs to be a future agenda item. This 300 feet thing is just wrong. Um, even, even just where I live, out uh, Lake Ranch Road, I live out there, uh, 300 feet is not, it's not, is not sufficient. You have to go farther than that because there's a lot of dead end roads and things like that that people won't see these little signs. You see those. Um, so I am, I am for this uh, proposal um, because living in a rural area there, um, we travel and see these small rezone signs. This, ha this, this happens <coughs> so many times where people um, don't know this is gonna happen and this happens in their backyard. So the 300 feet thing definitely has to change. Um, as far as the one mile for um, the notific, the, is that one mile for notification or is that requirement for the power station distance? Sir, you're not supposed to be talking to the panel. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so um, the EPA requirement for a gas power peaker plant is three miles. Three miles. One mile is not, not far enough. So if you go by the EPA standards, three miles. Um, and also, I think the, with the subdivision notifications, it should be, I'd say, like two miles notification, just because of the rural area we live in. That's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mike Wise and Roland Kingsbury and Roger McClellan. Good afternoon, Chairperson Gillette and the Zoning Commission. Um, my name is Mike Wise. I live at 2606 East Nez Pierce Road. I'm within 1,200 feet of that property. I am in favor of approving the agenda, item 18 as written, as I feel the added requirement for utility power stations and commercial generation plants to require a special use permit and a one mile notification, RADIUS helps ensure the safety, the health, and the overall well being of the Mojave County residents while ensuring the stability of their property values for the future. 1,200 feet from a peaker plant is just too close. It's going to put out smog, it's going to put out emissions. And the EPA says three miles, and I'm 1,200 feet from it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Richard Kingsbury. My name is Richard Kingsbury. Uh, I'm sorry. Good afternoon, Chairman and fellow zoning planning and zoning commission members. My name is Richard Kingsbury. My address is 2603 East Pawnee Trail, Fort Mojave, Arizona. I have lived there for three years. I am in favor of approving the agenda item 18 as written as I feel the added requirement for utility power stations and commercial generation plants to require a special use permit and a one mile notification radius helps ensure the safety, health, and overall well being of the Mojave County residents while ensuring the stability of their property values for the future. Also, uh, in John Martell's statement there, as far as the property that's in question, which is Site A. It is in a floodplain zone. It was originally dated in 2018 for a heavy manufacturing to be completed within two years, or it would revert back to, res to uh, agricultural. <coughs> 
It was not done in 2020. Somehow the Planning Commission failed to revert this property back. They extended this last year, I believe it was on the December 4th meeting of 2023. They asked for an extension. Why were they given an extension? When this should have already been reverted back, there should not have been a re an extension granted. It should have been reverted back automatically. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Roger Mc, uh, McClellan, Gerald Meyer, and Kathy Uden. They had to leave. And which one was that? Roger and Kathy. Okay. Good afternoon. <clears throat> My name is Gerald Miner. I live at 6016 South Jaguar Court in Fort Mojave. My house is located a quarter mile from the proposed location of the Peaker plant. And I also have an unobstructed view from my living room picture window. Uh, I am for this amendment. Uh, the purpose of the amendment is not to create an untold burden on uh, rezone requests, but rather to create a an additional tool for greater transparency and help you in making your decisions. Again, I repeat, I'm for this amendment. Additionally, on Monday, May 8th, there was a very informative article in the Arizona Republic with that explain the many ramifications of peaker plants and their effect on the rezoning community. If you did not get to read it, I brought a copy for your review, and I think you would be very enlightened if you were able to read it if you haven't already read it. Would you like this, ma'am? Um, you can give it to the clerk. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Linda McClellan. She gone too. Okay. How about Mary uh, Arinaga? Oh, there we go. And Paula Franks. Good afternoon. My name is Mary Arsenega. I live in uh, Fort Mojave. Um, I'm uh, for this. Uh, I'm, I'm for the agenda item 18. I think that the noticing radius should be increased from 300 feet to one mile due to the n rural nature of Mojave County. Uh, 300 feet wouldn't. Um, always capture all the property owners that are close to a property that was impacted. Uh, by expanding the notice radius, it would allow neighbors most likely impacted a chance to participate in uh, the land use. And citizen involvement often results in more harmonious outcome to any project. So, thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, Chairperson Gillette and fellow Planning and Zoning Commission members. My name is Paula Franks. I've been uh, uh, at 2576 East Myra Street in Fort Mojave for over eight years. Um, I agree, or I'm in favor of approving Agenda Item 18 as it is written. And I think it's only fair that people be notified of these things that are coming at them like a freight train. Thank you. Thank you. 
I am going to close the public hearing and ask if any of the commissioners have any questions. I have a question. Commissioner Cartel. Um, this is for staff. So this, this proposed uh, change requires, would require if it passed a special use permit. That's, that's revocable, isn't it? Uh, Chairman Gillette, Commissioner Patillo, that is correct. If a special use permit uh, is something that the Board of Supervisors could revoke. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely in favor of notification and transparency. I, I don't know that I can swallow asking some, you know, having somebody spend tens of millions of dollars or more and then say, no, I'm sorry, we, 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 we've changed our mind. Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner Bradshaw. Yep. Thank. You. Thank you. Um, so, well, t to that end, I did have a question about special per use permit as well. And to that end, if it is revocable, that is that's that's a dangerous element for any of these uses in MX zone. Um, there's, you know, even a landfill. How do you revoke a landfill special special use permit? Which is why it's not a special use. It's it's inherent in the MX zone. I am, however, in favor of additional. I mean, this is a this is a, a an aggressive zoning. You can you basically can do anything you want in this zone. With I mean, you know, crematoriums, uh, jet engine plant manufacturing, landfills. I mean, that's 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 a pretty intense zone. So I am in I am in favor of additional notification to property owners when an MX zone. Or a site plan comes in or how whatever the notification is is required but so but I, I am I would not be in favor of calling it a special use permit for this instance Commissioner um, what is your Hellums Hellum, thank yes, you. It's, I'm also new um, I my only I, I agree with additional notification but some of these other things on this list are just as volatile. Does that mean that we would not need to provide notification if we were to approve this right now as written? You wouldn't need to provide notification for any other type of That's any right. other type of thing listed. We're just calling out. Mm -hmm. So for the same group, you would be totally okay with aircraft testing and everything that goes along with that with no notification. I just see that just as troubling in the future, maybe not for this group, but for other groups. This is so spited towards one industry i don't think that there's uh, i can't imagine this being acceptable certainly madam chair board of commissioners mac mckeever again from fort mojave at the time that uh that we started this petition we were so affected by this this speaker plant that that was kind of our our dead focus and that was uh that was kind of the only thing we really looked at was how to protect uh the residents of mojave valley from that type of plant uh i have spoke with staff uh recently and we've talked about maybe that petition that we put forward wasn't worded exactly correctly and it's exactly what you're saying uh uh that uh we should address the entire heavy manufacturing rezoning instead of just one particular part. So uh, again, I don't think we would be happy with just that one mile notice on the one item. I think we'd be better off to go back and revisit it. So thank you. Are you are, are you, you agreeing that then this should be denied so that you can come back with or a better continued. one? I, I, I would think continued. I don't know all the rules and requirements for for all of that i'm we're very new at this um if it could be continued so that we would have a chance to work with staff and uh reward that petition and if necessary get even a new petition created if that's what it takes we would be willing to do that thank you sir thank you madam chair uh, so, yes, um, so i, I mean so as far as i think i think the point is well taken that that the information was not put forward adequately to the public and to be fair even this commission um when we approved that that extension of time um so i i think that more information delivered on these mx zones would the better because they are a a volatile zone a little ambiguous commissioner hubbard yes 
Uh, when this first brought up and we've given the extension on it, they're supposed to bring back, I thought, a little more information. <clears throat> the peaker plants, uh, three miles to me is not even far enough. Peaker plants are not used uh, very often except for a complete failure. And in this area, we have not had a complete failure, so I don't even see the, the reason for it. I wouldn't have I wouldn't want this in my backyard either as far as the whole thing goes um, I'd like more information on this and and like you say you're gonna bring it back uh, they're not very specific on this is this a they're gonna put windmills up we don't know windmills you know they they, they run a petroleum it takes several thousand gallons to run those things the yeah. blades have to be re removed that, and very inefficient. Changed. Well, I believe what we're addressing, though, is just the notification. Yeah, they'll, but we're looking at, a, yeah, they'll be, they'll be addressing that, but they should bring it back to us and let me know. Uh, it's, thank you. Um, Scott, do you think the best way to do is just go with the denial of this so they can start all over from scratch or uh, table it? Ma Madam Chair, Commissioners, I think there's a few different options that we could probably proceed with. Um, if the commission recommended denial, it would still have to go to the Board of Supervisors and they would hear the item as well. Um, if the applicant, I think, wanted to withdraw his application, that could be an option as well. And then, then it wouldn't have to go to the Board of Supervisors. And if the commission, the commission at any time can direct staff to, to look at things. So if the, if the commission said, hey, staff, look at notification requirements for MX zones and see if we can increase that to uh, a mile, then that's something that staff would have to do. They wouldn't have to go gather signatures again. Um, the commission is directing staff to, to bring forth an item um, to amend our ordinance. But in order to do that, they would have to withdraw this one or just we... I mean, the commission can direct staff regardless. Okay. But in order for this one... Uh, this one right now, regardless of what happens, if you guys um, um, approve or deny, it's going to go to the board mm -hmm. unless they withdraw. Sure. Uh, we, I'd like to make a recommendation and a, a motion to deny it. Uh, Let it go to the you got to go to the supervisors. Uh, Ms. Commissioner Hubbard, give me a chance to find out okay. if they will withdraw. Okay. <laughs> Sir. Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners, Mike McKeever again. I uh, just consulted my group, and they are good with us withdrawing this at this time, and we will go back and revisit it with staff and try to make sure our wording and uh, our approach is correct this time. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. And we will direct staff to um, investigate and do your Ma thing. Madam Chair, I believe we'd have to have a motion from the commission to direct to, staff. To do that, okay. Right. Then I'll entertain a motion. To Madam Chair, I have a question before we do that. Okay. And the question is, so the, it sounds like the applicant is willing to come back and readdress this, or would it be more efficient for us to just direct no. staff in, to that end? How, how? That would thank you guys. We are more than willing to come back and express our concerns. Yep. Okay. Whatever you think is the best and most efficient way to go. Thank you, sir. Sure. My motion still stands to deny. They rescinded it. They removed it. They were, well, they, they have withdrawn. They withdrawn. Were they the, willing to come back? Okay. They, they, they withdrawn. So what I need is I need a motion for staff to look into this. I move for staff to work with the community that so diligently has brought this issue before our attention and other stakeholders such as utility providers uh, to come up with a solution to this, this, this issue and come back with a recommendation for an improved notification process for all of MX zoning. I would second that motion, if you're done. I'm done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have a motion by Commissioner Pertillo, seconded by Commissioner Bradshaw. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Item number 19 is the 2025 general plan update 
Matthew Gunderson, Planning Supervisor. Thank you, um, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for being so polite. All right, so for the uh, general plan update that we've referenced a couple times here already, um, so as it's been uh, explained, uh, every 10 years, state statute requires that the Mojave County general plan be updated. Um, the last approval was in 2015, uh, so that means we need to try and get that approval by the Board of Supervisors uh, next year in 2025. Uh, it is a lengthy process that uh, involves a lot of public participation, uh, which is why we're getting started uh, right now. We did present uh, the, the framework of this plan to the Board of Supervisors who did approve it, so now we're looking to move forward with it. Uh, one of the biggest parts of that will be uh, the formation of a general plan subcommittee uh, of this commission. Um, the thought that we had would be to have one commissioner from each supervisor district um, on that uh, subcommittee. I, I don't know that it necessarily needs to be that, though. Um, oh, did the board approve that? So never mind. It does have to be one from each. So, uh, and then um, the the framework of it is we will meet. It will have hold these public meetings. Um, so the. The public meetings would be, they'd start next month in May. Uh, we'd have two up in the Arizona Strip area, one uh, for the Beaver Dam and Littlefield and, and scenic vicinity, and the other one in the Colorado City Cane Beds area. Uh, we would have one in the for Lake Havasu City and Topak, one in Golden Valley. Um, Kingman, we would hold one in Wikiup. We'd have one for the Bullhead City, Fort Mojave area. Um, did I skip any i think oh and then also uh one in the uh kind of the the north portion south of the grand canyon so mead view dolan springs white hills one in that vicinity and then one uh in yucca um and then this subcommittee would meet um monthly when we hold these meetings so starting in may um and and Basically, after we hold these community meetings, we would meet with this subcommittee to discuss uh, the concerns or the ideas from the, the public that have been received, and then we would work with that subcommittee on how we want to integrate those uh, ideas and thoughts into the general plan update. So it would start in May, of, so next month, um, and then it would go through uh, this year, so the last of the meetings would be in October of this year, um, and then we would get it ready to in January of 2025 to start the the formal process where there's a state statute requirements for review where we need to send it to uh, various stakeholders um, throughout the state. Uh, so we would do that, and then with the ultimate goal of sending it to the full Planning and Zoning Commission in April uh, of 2025, and then to send it to the Board of Supervisors in May of 2025 for their ultimate approval. So that is kind of what we have set up. Uh, I, we would ask for the subcommittee to be formed at our next meeting um, in May. And with that, I am open to any questions that you have. Thank you. Any questions? I, I do, well, and it's more about the subcommittee. So, um, so on the on the subcommittee, so you uh, obviously some some of us travel a fair distance. So the subcommittee would would necess necessarily have to plan for that additional time uh, after the after this regular meeting. Is that correct? Uh, and I, I think the idea would be that it would be held on a different day. A different um, day. But I, I do think we would have the option to attend virtually via teams uh, okay. if necessary to cut back on that. And there's no dates picked yet for those? Correct, none of the meetings have dates yet. So we're still working on dates, times and specific dates and times and locations for these meetings. Um, and then uh, we will inform uh, the commission and the public as, as those are get scheduled. I have a nomination for John Hassett from District 2 to <laughs> <laughs> denied. <laughs> I, uh, uh, since we need no one person from each district, it I, has, I think it should be the newest. <laughs> the rookie commissioners should be I, the ones. I, I would agree. There you go. See, there we go. So, so I think that I think what we should do is we should get together with our counterpart 
from our district and decide between the two of you which one of you wants to be on the commission and then report back to us at the, our next is, meeting. Is that, is that the process or do the supervisors directly select that? That individual. <laughs> yes, My understanding sorry. is that it would be between the, the commissioners. Okay. You can count me in, I'll be there. <laughs> would, would the meetings be, be um, attendable via, or, or attendable remotely? Okay. Yes we, yes, we would make that an option. Okay. Okay, when you say meetings, would the subcommittee members be required to do the different meetings or only subcommittee meetings? That would only be for the subcommittee meetings. Mm. Um, and in fact, I think we'd probably want to, if you plan on attending any of the public meetings, uh, to make sure that you're coordinating with the clerk so that we can be aware of uh, if we may have a, a quorum attend these meetings and so that we can get the notification necessary to, to do that. And are the subcommittee meetings here? Yeah, we're planning on holding those at this location or via um, the Wait, video yeah. conference. If here or Did, didn't you just spell out that we're going to go to all the different districts, though? Yeah, I thought that's those what you said, the, 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 Yeah, sorry. So the community meetings will be held in those locations. So we, we will travel to those locations to meet with the, the general public. The subcommittee meetings would be in this location uh, with the option to attend virtually. Yeah, and you're not if you're on the subcommittee meeting uh, subcommittee you're not required to go to the community meeting we'll 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 be providing information of what happened in the community meetings to the subcommittee so okay so when you say we we mean we staff yes yeah, the staff. <laughs> okay <laughs> okay all right so I think we've got that settled hmm. if we're gonna move on settled. to the next settled. item which is the annual election of the chair and the vice chair. So I need a nomination. Chair. I would like to nominate oh. Commissioner Hassett. Uh, no, I don't have someone. Wait a minute. Com Who's first? <laughs> Commissioner Hubbard. We're all getting delusions. Who's yeah. on second? Uh, we're, we're there. Sugar time. We're there. I don't see any need for change. I nominate uh, Ms. Gillette for chair. Okay. Um, I don't know. Do we have to have a second on these? Mm -hmm. Okay, I need a second. A second. Okay, I have a nomination and a second on the floor. Do we want to vote? Well, um, this is. Oh. <laughs> well. Okay, so uh, do we have any more nominations? I would like to nominate Vice Chair Hassett. Do we have a second? I'll second. Oh. I'll second. <laughs> so do you accept? Oh, yes, accepted. Okay, so now we have. Two people who have been nominated for chair, and I don't know how we wish Battle Royale to draw. <laughs> yeah, right in front. Um, how, how should well, what should I do here? Make do legal we, check. Rock paper scissors. Yeah, should we um, do it by? Um, Who's this, by the way? Day one. Should we do it by by little pieces of paper? So you could, you have the two nominations, and then if someone wants to make a motion on voting. That person, on um, um, voting style, okay, voting so process. I should make it make no, no, no. On, I on got you. I, I catch what oh. you're saying. So we are now going to vote on whether Lawana Gillette will be chair. So all in favor, say aye. Wait, wait. I think we misunderstood what he was saying, right? Didn't we? No. We yeah, so you you could do it like you would any other motion, right? Oh, so oh, okay, okay. That's what I'm you doing. get a motion, you get a second. You, so you have the nominations, and then now you would need the actual. Right. On that and I'm going in order of nomination. So no mail-in ballots. We're going to know who votes okay. what that way. Right. Okay. Yes, we are. We're going to know who our friends are. On the table. Right. Yeah. Okay. All in favor. So I have a question. I have a question. Be, the question. I do have a question before we start the nomination. Okay. So the question is, is are, do, you, do you want to continue as chairperson? I think that's I a fair like question. I would like very much to continue okay. as chair. Okay. So we started again. Uh, all in favor of Luana Gillette being chair, please say aye. 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 Um, nays? Nay. Nay. Nay, but, but I think you did a good job. I, I <laughs> love the work you've done. So we have one, two, three nays. Four, I believe. I better do roll call votes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are we... Say aye and nay? No, I said, I said nay. 
Oh. We are voting on whether or not I'm to stay as chair. And, and if I fail, then of course he's chair. We haven't gotten to that no, point but yet. I mean, we haven't gotten to that we point. We haven't yet. gotten to that point yet. Is that um, the same process? Yes. It would be, yes. Let's, um, let's do a two separate process, take as much time as possible, slow it down. <laughs> slow it down. I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. Um, I know that we have two nays here. What are your votes? I voted aye. Aye. You know, I'm brand new. I, I don't want to make I, it, I, 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 you know, I like, I'll I get off the wrong vote. get one vote. <laughs> so we have one, two, three nays. Four. And we have one, two, three, four, five, uh, six. Madam Chair. Six. What, why don't we have them do a roll call? What, let's have a roll call vote. Okay. Roll call. That's a good idea. Televised. It is. Commissioner Hubbard? Aye. Commissioner Bradshaw? Nay. Commissioner Helms? Nay. Commissioner Morse? Aye. Commis or Chair? Aye. Person Gillette? Vice Chair Hassett? Nay. Commissioner Patilla? Nay. Commissioner Martin? Commissioner Ruby? Nay. Motion didn't pass. Okay, so. That means that automatically Commissioner Hassett will be the chair, and now we need to vote for uh, vice chair. And, and Madam Chair, second. I, I understand. Theoretically, it would seem like Commissioner Hassett would win, but you would need to take a vote on Commissioner Hassett as well. Yeah, be, because case I do. Somebody, so now you want to get technical. Yeah. Well, it would be just in case if somebody changed because they... Well, and I, I think the last, I think the last iteration that, that we changed the rules. If a motion is fails by denial, then there has to be a new motion on the table. I move to nominate Chairman or Chairman Vice Chair Hassett to be our chairman for the next year. Second. Is that right? It, yes. It felt right. It felt right. <laughs> okay, so we have a. We have to take another vote. And second. A motion on the floor of Perhaps it. Uh, proposed and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So moved. Hey, I have a question. Why doesn't it just, this is the only commissioner board I've ever sat on that it doesn't just transition through vice to chair and then you. Why is that? Yep. Because in most times nobody wants to be chair. <laughs> That's probably why. Well, no, I, and on all the bylaws of all the boards I've ever sat on, you just move up. As soon as the term's up. So the bylaws don't say that. Okay, so I have a motion on the floor for Luana Gillette to oh. be vice mayor. Uh, all vice in mayor. favor say vice aye. Mayor. Of which vice, vice chair. Vice chair, not mayor. I did say vice chair. No, yes, mayor. Mayor. <laughs> but whatever. I, I'm Great. good for mayor, chair, <laughs> okay. president. Okay, so we have a Hassett as chair and Gillette as vice chair. Agreed. Seconded. Second. Correct. Is that what we have? Yes. We need a vote. You still on, need a vote on the vice chair. I thought we did. We didn't vote, vote yet okay. on the vice chair. All in favor of Luana Gillette being vice chair, say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Any commissioner comments? Um, I have a couple of brief ones. I hope okay. that I'll, I'll make them brief because we've been here a long time. So um, I want to, and, and maybe I can discuss this with staff offline a little bit, but you know, these, these large tract zone changes come in, and it's really difficult for us to, to, make, to understand what's being asked other than they want to change, you know, 1,000 acres to some other zone without additional information. Now, we ultimately approved the one that came through today, but that was kind of by default of the general plan. It wasn't fun because we didn't know what was going on, what the information, what, what, what the site was planned to look like. Or, and, and to be fair, neither did the developer. Um, and I don't think that's fair to anybody um, on the table, around the table, when we do these, these large tract zoning and not have all the information or more information on the table. It, and so I don't know how to change that. I don't know what to do about that. If, we, if there's some more site plan information, if there's some diagrams that we can have. I mean, where, where is the sewer, would the sewer tra treatment plant go? Where are the roads? Where are the infrastructures supposed to land in these? And I get this, it's kind of, 
the cart before the horse a little teeny bit, except for maybe not, because we're, we're getting, giving them an opportunity to, to move forward based on a picture, which is really difficult to do. Some kind of intent on their part. Yeah, we've, we've basically allowed all the zonings that, that the general plan suggested, yet those areas may not fit physically with what needs to get done. I mean, you, what do you, where are you going to put a treatment plant? Yeah, you're not going to do all those septic, I can tell you that. Where are you going to put a wastewater treatment plant? Okay, and then you've got setback requirements for ADQ does. Madam or, Chair, Commissioner. The I, general I, plan I, isn't always I would just interrupt match. real quick. Just to say, I think we're running far afield of what's been noticed on the agenda. We're now just kind of talking about. If there was a, if there's a general comment for staff, that's fine. But if we're no, going to start discussing matters. No, I think this is the commissioner's opportunity to comment to the staff and ask and questions. That's fine, but if we, if we start getting into specifics, I think we'd, say we'd have to. Sure, I'm not asking for action, but I'm asking for if is there something that we can do internally to to change the process and adapt the process to where we get more information. Ma Madam Chair, Commissioner uh, Bradshaw, absolutely. I think um, having maybe more of a, a conceptual plan for a lot of these projects is is warranted, um, and we can definitely look into some of our requirements of what we're requiring on a rezone or a general plan amendment and then um, come back to to the commission with some maybe modifications on what kind of conceptual um, requirements we would have for a project like this yeah because a lot of times the project doesn't match the general plan i know i've heard a lot of people say that well it matches the general plan so that's okay but that doesn't doesn't match and it doesn't go with the public and it doesn't go with the people that are trying to fight it madam chair if i, I don't may. have a go ahead oh Sorry. congratulations <laughs> you won't be here next time right <laughs> uh, thank you i think kathy tackett hicks spoiled us with that whole presentation layout of that with, proposed with the white hills proposal right mm-hmm and if I may, I think, and I definitely understand the, the commission's intent and, and, and frustration with, with not having the full picture in front of you. I, I think, <clears throat> and what we can do, excuse me, as staff, is we, we can go back and look at the zoning ordinance and look at what the requirements are for a proposed rezone and, and, and see if there's an, <clears throat> excuse me, an opportunity to um, look at, you know, for, for rezones over a certain acreage, the, these types of things are needed. Um, having come from the, the development side, um, it, it definitely helps get your project through if you have a pretty picture that, that is all sunshine and rainbows and, and you present it to the commission. Unfortunately, there's nothing binding on that, on that proposed concept. So I, I think there, there's been this, um, th th there's always this ebb and flow of, wanting to provide more information to the commission and, and having that. But then I'll, I'll, I'll be up front back when I was a developer, you know, you, you make this beautiful picture that everybody loves. And then maybe that's not what happens, but that's a, a concept of what you're trying to present there. So, so it gets approved, but there's nothing binding saying that that pretty picture has to be implemented. So I, I think that's kind of the, the, the place where we get caught in the middle of, Hey, we, we want something to propose to council or to commission and, and to the board. However, there's there's nothing saying that that's what they're going to end up doing. So we could have required, you know, specifically today, we could have said, hey, we want a layout of, of what you're going to do. But when it until they come forward with that preliminary plat and those final plats, there's nothing really binding on them to, to maintain what they propose in that conceptual plan. So. I definitely understand it and, and see the, the benefit of having that. Um, but from a, from a regulatory standpoint, there, there's nothing saying that that is what we're going to end up with. Either. So just wanted to share that insight, but we will. Wouldn't we'll... they have an idea? Could mm -hmm. it, it, if I'm just spitting out rough numbers, if they're going to build 3000 homes, couldn't they bring us something in regards to water that they spoke with 
so and so and we can get water to these 3000 homes that's one of water is a big issue with us and, and i believe speaking in generalities um generally that that is one of the when a developer comes forward and and larry can probably speak and and uh mr or commissioner bradshaw can also speak yeah probably more more detailed and, and knowledgeable on this than I do but um, a, as a developer is moving forward with these different items those are all aspects that they consider and so oh, no, we've got I a lot of expertise on, on the Commission so I appreciate that but um, but so those are all things that that they look at going forward but but one of the main things if you don't get zoning none of those matter and, and I think that was mentioned today too is hey this is step one to see whether or not investing the money in those various aspects is going to play out or not but they should have an idea if they can get water for their project yes but that's ultimately going to be on them if they can't you still have to do all those things just because we no, allowed that right. reason no, you do no, i get they it. still have to meet but when all they those come hurdles. here with no information on what they're <clears> doing surely you tried to figure out where you're going to get the water from well i think that in the process of of, of down the line that's taken care of after us mm -hmm. is that not correct yeah. madam chair and commissioners yeah so we're not going to approve a project that they can't actually do so we do have stipulations in our subdivision ordinance or subdivision uh, regulations that require water right. uh, i get it but right. i don't want to try to push something forward where they're going to drain all these people's <coughs> well water. That's, I understand that, yeah. So. Chairman Gillette, one other thing just to clarify is the preliminary plat is the needs to come before the Planning and Zoning Commission. So for this subdivision, you will see this subdivision again if it gets built out at the preliminary plat stage and that they will have all of those things spelt out at that time where who those uh, utility providers are where their wastewater treatment plant would be going all of that information okay um That's anybody else want to talk about anything if not i'm going to do the call to the public if you would like to come down to the podium please Name and address, please. Thank you, Danielle Olekek, 3808 North Stewart Mountain Road, Golden Valley. Um, I appreciate all your guys' comments today and thinking about the proposal, the fourth 1400 rezone. This one is important because it is located inside of the GVID boundary lines, which has very strict policies and procedures about development inside there. And I'm just not sure if that was brought to the table too, like, the hookup fees and the water allocations, there really are only 407 water allocations left to sell, if you look into it. And recently, the Board of Supervisors, it was brought up by uh, Director Latowski that right now, the current, if we were at max capacity with the 6,200 original allotments, we couldn't meet capacity with the two wells that we have. And so I'd like to see how much it would cost the developers to build that infrastructure just with purchasing water allocations and um, hookup fees. It ranges without having to do wells, holding tanks, booster pumps, and lines. It's low-balling 15 to $20 million investment into the system. And these developers were trying to get themselves out of the water district just last year. And we're very thankful that the Board of Supervisors voted that down because they were trying not to be liable for having to improve the water district in Golden Valley. And so there's a lot of things to consider on these and really they did not put any effort towards our meeting, but I do thank you guys. And there's a lot of conflict of interest going on if you really look at those letters of support. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Is there any further business to come before this commission? Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned.